Hey! Hey! A little early. A hey! little early. Oh, sorry. Just, uh, just a bit too early. A hair early. You're just ready to get at it. I know. I'm well, having a good go. day. Let's go. We were talking about colors and what colors we like. Are you having a good day? Mm -hmm. I am. So I, far? Guys, I spent $600 earlier in the year on a mouth guard to sleep in, courtesy of my dentist. And last night was the first night with the sleep guard. And Great dude, success. changed my whole life. Really? How, how, really? how much money? Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Insurance doesn't cover it. You can't it. put a price on good sleep. Yeah. So what are we talking you about? Grinding teeth. In the this mouth? is for grinding teeth. I my oh. jaw. No, her I and Tim clinch. box at night. Yeah. I box Tim. <laughs> uh, it's it's custom, so it's like molded, and it's to help my teeth not shift anymore. And dude, I feel like I feel like my my face wasn't stressed for the entire time I was asleep. It was nothing wow. sexier than a woman putting her mouth guard in before she goes to bed. Yeah, yeah with the big metal yeah. bars that yeah. go over your what head. Is it, and... is it headgear? It's headgear. And I, I walked at Tim. I didn't know he was uh, taking a leak in our upstairs bathroom last night. He had the, <laughs> this is weird That's husband weird behavior. Way. I'm putting a towel away in my towel closet in the extra bedroom. I don't realize that my husband is in the dark sitting down on the toilet in the extra bathroom in there, peeing, not doing number two. The door is open. I don't know he's in there, okay? I walk by, I have the mouth guard in. <laughs> and I'm, I can't wait to show him, but I can't find him in our house. Mm. And I walk, <laughs> put the towel away. Yeah. And I walk by the door and Tim just in the dark, completely silent, goes, hello. Oh. And I go, oh my God. <laughs> He wasn't on his phone or anything? I love he was just that. He was just sitting there, sitting in the dark, and I go, on the "Toilet in the go, dark." You have to stop this. This happens too often, <laughs> and so I turned the lights on, and now I'm just sitting there looking at him because I'm like, "You wanted this, yeah, you yeah. got How it." How weird! And so he, I go, was, he was sitting so to pee. Awesome. He was sitting to pee. Oh, my kind of guy. <laughs> and I, I say, "My man." I and so him. it's the most awkward situation ever. And so I'm smiling at him, and it's like kind of a clear, weird blue on the bottom of my. Right. That's what my mouth guard looks like. And I go, "Look at this." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, that's cool." And I'm yeah. like, "Can you please shut the door?" Or get the hell out of here. So it's just yeah, a it's separate rooms now. It's just a single <laughs> tray, just the bottom. Just not, the bottom. Just six hundred dollars. I'm in the wrong right. business. What? Yeah, I had yeah. I had a problem uh, a couple of years ago. I was grinding, grinding. It was enough where my jaw was. Uh, it was painful. Yeah. Painful, and I got a I got a mouth guard. I, I really I had, I, yeah. I do you use it? Still? No, I don't need it anymore. Okay, I, good. I stopped. That's the mouth. You know, I guess the mouth guard. So what's it do? Just relax your your mouth it, from going crazy. It hold, there's enough to where it's like you can still talk with it and whatnot, but it's enough to where you feel like your jaw is just rested in a rested mm. state. Um, and also, like I grind my teeth so much, and I, my enamel is going away. And I'm like, I just want to keep my teeth, my real teeth, till I'm 80. You know, so yeah, I was getting like sensitive teeth because of it. Yeah. It's, it caused a whole bunch of oh, issues. Oh no! Because I was just so at night. And mm -hmm. it's a, it was a stress thing. Right. Just so tight and at night just grinding. Yeah. And, and I'd wake up in the morning with a sore jaw. Yeah, man. Uh, and you don't have to use it anymore. Can can I borrow it? <laughs> yeah, it'll fit you perfectly. Yeah, if I can find it. Okay, thank you. I've ground down my teeth tremendously. If you look at pictures from when I was a teenager, my teeth are like twice as big. And they've all ground down. And every time I went to the dentist, they're like... Yo, you're you're grinding your teeth when you're awake. You must be, and you must be doing it all through the night because yeah. it's uh, it's sink. They're they're sinking in on each other. The molars back here. That's right. They didn't give me any six hundred dollar thing. They gave me like a forty dollar. Um, yeah, I don't remember paying like six hundred bucks. Piece of well, plastic. This, I mean, they did the thing where they take the um, I don't know how it's the laser. X ray yeah. of your teeth to make it exactly perfect, whatever that technology is. But my dentist said it's, it looks like a giant dildo. It they does. Put in your mouth. <laughs> they do. <laughs> what? Ah, yeah. So my dentist said though, if you grind your teeth at night, it's it's you can translate one night of that to like thirty days of chewing. Oh great! So you were just gnawing I've been chewing down for your six hundred years. Yeah. Me too. Wow. Yeah. Well, I feel great. Hey, my buck teeth are smaller now though, so That's it kind of pays off. I tell you what, your day was filled with. So far, joy. Yes. You chose joy this morning. I did. Thank you. I don't know. This morning was just, eh, got up. For you? Came to work. Sat down at the computer, just, you know, doing all show prep. Uh, <laughs> you know, Moon walks in, talking about how there's pizza. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Pizza in the kitchen. I'm and, with them. Uh, Not just pizza, emos. Yeah, yeah. emos. It's fresh, there's right? two, There's Yeah, there's two boxes of emos in the kitchen. Now, obviously... Nobody ordered it this morning because I turned on the lights here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is pizza from yesterday. Five o'clock, actually, right? 
Uh, of course. Uh, what what well, do you think? You... The first thing I did was I checked the receipt to see what time it got here. I can't even believe you would consider eating it. Like, that's the disappointing thing. Had you not stopped me when we went back in there to get coffee together, I'd have had a piece. I love Emos. I really no, love No, listen, it. I love it pizza, too. Yeah, I think it's... It's and there's something that never goes bad. Yes, yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. Some, some does. <laughs> yes, it does. Emos kind of does that. I'm telling you, there's some weird thing about that Provel. Like it it's seals, okay. seals it from bacteria. It's okay for... if it's left out for a couple hours. But this is 5 o'clock. Depends on what's on it. 11 hours later. If it were just cheese... I'd have heated it up and eat. Oh, eat. man. Yeah, because, and we were talking about this, and Rose, you disagree with Moon and I, that when you go to sleep at night and you forget to put the Emo's pizza in the fridge overnight and then you get up in the morning at your own house, you have a little piece for It's right. okay. I'm good. It's okay when you have the immune system of a 20-year-old. Right. And this is college, mm -hmm. and, you know, you're on a budget. Good bacteria. You're mm -hmm. on a budget, and your body, your 20-year-old body could handle it. Your your twenty year old body could fight off whatever uh -huh. bacteria is in there. It is interesting. You're in your forties now, buddy. I know it is interesting <laughs> that you say that because uh, I did realize that my body has turned, and it was because um, my buddy Mike, bass player for for Goldfinger, uh, was in my room. We were we were packing our we were doing like a little story of the gear uh, episode about his bass, and he goes, "Hey man, uh, I can't fit all this hot sauce in my in my guitar case. You should take some like awesome hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave him in New York. Brought it home. Habanero." Habanero honey hot sauce. Mm. <laughs> so good. It hurts so bad, I think I can't have it no more. Really? Yeah. Our, our, listen, not our here. bodies aren't what they, what they once were. Not here. We're breaking down. Yeah. It didn't hurt my mouth. It didn't hurt oh, my tummy. Oh, this is the return? Hurt your b-hole? I have never had that happen before. Oh, no. Yeah, I had that happen once when ah, I did that. you're fine. When I did that hot soup contest once. Yeah, but this was yeah. nothing like that. Contest. This was like... Like spicy soup? What was the contest? You just had to keep going? It was over oh, at Noodle, right? Yeah, Chef, Chef Will and, this was and Steve Ewing and all those guys that were over at Noodle House. And Dumb. Chef Will was bleeding. His Chef nose Will was made bleeding. It. It, was hot, it, was a, <laughs> it was a hot... It was who could finish the bowl of hot soup. <laughs> oh, And not, no. not scalding hot, but like spicy, spicy hot. Spicy hot, yeah, yeah. And he used... And you know Chef Will, he's evil. He is evil and so he lovely. He got these chilies from, I don't know, somewhere in Southeast Asia... Like stuff you'd have to like special order, need a license for. Yeah. And he made the soup and uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh Steve. so it was it was so it was who could get through it and then who could get through it the fastest. Uh-huh. And they they shrink wrap the milk. So you if you wanted to drink milk's the only thing that, that could alleviate that kind of right. pain. So they they shrink wrapped it with like, you know, forty layers of shrink wrap. So if you wanted to drink milk, you had a breakthrough. <laughs> it was wild. Steve Ewing was out first. Was he really? He, I think he took uh, done. You know who's good smart, at that? Smart, smart, smart. Similar smart. story. I was at Rockstar Tacos, and Chef Will always has a special sauce in the back mm. yeah, that yeah. he hasn't put out on the tables or anything yet. And so Bill Ryder of the Urge and I and his wife and Tim, we all went to Rockstar Tacos and the, Chef Will brings out a ton of spoons, and he goes, all right, everybody's tried these hot sauces that I've made in the back. And these guys in the Urge were just taking tablespoons of hot sauce and just drinking it straight up and, like, burning their mouths off. Well, What's up with that band? So nobody finished the soup, and then Will comes from the back. He goes, you guys are all pusses. Right. And, take, and took a bowl and just downed it. And <laughs> he had this look on his face. I'm like, you all right, buddy? And he, he like, two trickles of blood started coming down his nose. Oh, <laughs> my go, God. Dude. You're bleeding. And he right. says, Did you think for a second that maybe this was a hospital visit? He asked him if he was all right, and he said, I finally feel alive. Yeah. So that night, <laughs> I, I finished about half the soup. I, I could not. I, I didn't want to be out first. Sure. Yeah, you didn't go in there knowing you were going to win. You, uh, you weren't, you weren't going to win that. It was for a charity thing. And uh, that night, we were at the grocery store and got the little cart going down the aisle. I'm with the wife and the kids, and I go, ooh, man, whew, something just hit me. Ooh, man, there's like a cinder block in my stomach. Go, ooh, man. I'm like, I got to go. <laughs> I to go. I'm like, I got to I gotta go. <laughs> Did you have, uh, you blew out in the grocery store? Oh, yeah. I, 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 it was severe. Oh, my God. Pa now, pain or just, just release? Both. I and never... I, I had to go in the handicap stall, and I used, like, the handles. Oh yeah, yeah. got to hold on. Keep you down. <laughs> I understand. And it was it was spicy going in and spicy coming out. Oh nice. Because you have receptors down there, dude. There's what? something down there, it, and I've never had that kind of pain, and it was so not fun. 
<laughs> I'll go ahead and share this. I uh, I just ha I had to jump in the shower. <laughs> I did. You had to cool your. I, I was I, I was like cool I was like I, I was like I need relief. I can't. I mean I can't walk around. I can't sit down. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> I'll stand in the shower and hope that helps. That is the worst. And I did it twice. Why well, I I, I was in the I was you know on the toilet. Uh huh. And I I texted my wife said send the boy in with like. Uh, <laughs> With like cooling wipes or something like. Oh my god, <laughs> kid! That's so funny. Oh no. <laughs> That's so funny. Send the boy in with cooling wipes. Yeah, why is it that like you go into the handicap stall, you just need more room when the situation like that's happening? Oh, I knew I needed a handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I needed like. Uh, <laughs> I knew bar. I needed that handicap <laughs> rail. You need a grab bar. Dude. I needed a grab bar. I get it. It was like when NASA, like when the rockets going up in the. In the air from the earth, and like all the fire is mm -hmm. on the ground. Yeah. That's what you. This if there if this was Civil War times, it would have gave me like a leather strap to yeah, my arm. Right, right. mm -hmm. Yeah, and Piece a swig of, of a vodka. Anyway, just so you know, pizza left out. Let's let's get the science of this. Okay. So it was facts? left out. I'm gonna hit you with facts. I'm gonna hit you with the facts. Is it safe to eat pizza that's been left out overnight? No. No. Oh. It is not. Ah, uh, doggone it. I've been okay. unsafe a lot in my life then. Hey, man. Uh, it is not safe to eat pizza that's been left out overnight. Pizza is considered a perishable food, and if left out, can cause bacteria to grow and lead to possible foodborne Ill illnesses. You like Staphylococcus? I don't. No. You like E. coli? Nope. Bacteria often grows on food when it's in the, quote, danger zone, which is between 40 degrees and 140 degrees. Perishable foods need to be kept at 40 degrees or below. That means food needs to go in your fridge. Hmm. Yeah, like but any other perishable foods, pizza that has been at room temperature or anywhere in the 40 to 140 degree danger zone for more than two hours should not be consumed. Yeah, but it's Provel. It's different. Listen. I was just in New York. I told you, we had a five-hour excursion just to get uh, a slice of New York pizza, some Brooklyn Brooklyn pizza. And uh, after, well, before and afterwards, we were talking about pizza. And, of course, I'm sitting here talking about St. Louis style because one of my New York, or one of the L.A. guys was like, what does St. Louis have as far as pizza? Is it like Chicago? And I said, absolutely not. It's pretty it's much its own thing. the opposite. And we talked about the difference between uh, Detroit and Chicago pizza and St. Louis pizza. And I said, it's a... Uh, it's something I really can't explain. You need to come here and um, it's its own animal. Yeah, you need you, you just you just need to try it. But no going in. That is its it is own different. animal. It's 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 you're not going to compare it here to a New York slice of pizza. Um, and the more I talked about it, the more I was like, man, I want to get that. I want to. get Well, that. when you get home, you could order some fresh. Well, when I saw it here, I'll fully admit, and I'm fine with it, that like I still am considering going over there and heating up one of the pieces. Uh. I thought about. <laughs> The very the same thing when I walked in. I was like, maybe, yeah. just maybe. Well, we got Smallman here. I was like, I wonder if she somehow ordered. Michelle Smallman. That's what I thought. Who, yeah, I, yeah thought, I was like, I maybe she had know. someone dropped it off for her because she's working super late. And no, no, it was it was, it was was here overnight. It was, the receipt says 5 o'clock. Uh, no, it says 5.38. 5.38. I wouldn't even check that. So was... look out. What uh, <laughs> If I do get food poisoning from leftover pizza outside, you know, what is what is... What are some of the symptoms? Right. Uh, cramping, stomach pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. Handles needed for bathroom. Uh, the onset time. of symptoms may occur within minutes to weeks and often presents itself as flu-like symptoms. Uh, but I've eaten pizza that sat out and didn't get sick. Why? Right. Well, the good doctor here that I'm... Because the Lord is with thee. Because I'm, I'm reading this article <laughs> that he wrote. Uh, says, ultimately, you probably just got lucky. Yeah. Well... Uh, whatever you whatever you want to call it, man. What about meatless or vegan pizza? Yes. Can I eat that if it's sat out? Sorry to say the same food safety rules apply no matter what kind of pizza you left out. Hey, that's good to know. Yep. Because now I don't have to wait for just the cheese. That's right. <laughs> this is good. This is an equal opportunity offender. Yep. Bottom line, you may have gotten away with eating pizza that sat out in the past without consequences, but that doesn't mean you'll be unscathed next time. Hmm. So if it sat out overnight, toss the pizza in the trash, compost, spare yourself the risk of foodborne illness. Better yet... Refrigerate the leftovers within two hours, and you can reheat it the next day. You Haven't guys, you though? How many times have you had pizza the next morning that was out on the counter or something? Not since I was in my twenties. Okay, it goes. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, in my house, if there's leftovers, it go, I I bag it. 
You put, either put yeah. it in the freezer or put it in the fridge. Yeah, we do too. You yeah. saw the conflict, both you two, Lerner and Riz. You guys saw the conflict yeah, well, that I had when you're I came into the Make office. That's the first decisions. thing that you said. You didn't say good morning. You're like, no, I didn't. guys, there's a pizza on the counter. I Make adult decisions. Okay? It's, under, it's under 12 hours. We're just the juice over... ain't worth the squeeze. It's I mean, or hours, we can do an experiment. <laughs> I mean, if you eat it now, I mean, the foodborne illness could probably hit you right before 10. Or could be weeks, it says. Oh. Did you not hear what the doctor said? Excuse me. I think it would hit pretty fast. I don't listen Ooh, to your BS research. I uh, went to uh, went to Mellow Mushroom yesterday for the first time. Oh yeah, you ever been there? Yes, not the Chesterfield one, but I've been to the South Lindbergh one. It's all right. That's all right. It's all right. That's all right. The it's, kids love it. It's one of those that yeah, when you have it, you're like, oh, this is really good. I couldn't I couldn't do this every month, but maybe like it's it's like a because it's a sit down thing. It kind of reminds you of the old days when you just go to Pizza Hut and, yeah. s- and sit down with family and eat pizza. Yeah, and there were there were people taken out. Uh, we sat we sat there. And they put the you know the pizza holder was on the on the uh, right on the table. That's an eat fresh. elevate. Mm-hmm. That's an eat fresh. Just eat. I, it I'd never had it before. And we were we were right down the street. We had you know something to be to. You know, we had something to go to in a, an hour and a half. So I'm like, all right, let's let's try this out. And uh, yeah, so, all right. I didn't know it was a national chain until just a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, because it looks so. Eclectic. Fun Ooh. and local, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, we walked in and go, oh, Mellow Mushroom's like a psychedelic thing. I'm like, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, groovy. Ooh. All right. All right, dude. <laughs> all right. I'm into this. I would think that you would steer clear just because you're such a wuss when it comes to mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Anything with the word mushroom, you're... <laughs> well, I, I looked at the menu before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? Prepare. You thought it might have mushrooms on everything? You never know. Mushroom uh, mushrooms in the in the name of the place. It's good. Uh, it was it was okay. I, it would it'll never be my favorite pizza. Yeah, I've never I've never heard anybody say Mellow Mushroom is my favorite. The place was was hopping though, doing good pretty option. good business. Always gets ranked really high on those those national pizza chain things. It's always like one of the sneaky ones in the top ten. Yeah, it was all right. I went to Sweetheart yesterday after the show. I picked up some vegan lunch for Tim and I because the month of vegan is coming to an end. What's that? It's a uh, it's a business that is kind of near Tower Grove. Um, it's a bakery. They do all everything's vegan in there. So they have these Fostis cupcakes that look like the Hostess cupcakes <laughs> with the cream filling with the little curly cues on top, the chocolate. Yeah, food. somebody brought me stuff from there once. Whoa, it's delicious. It's all handcrafted, so it, it's all fresh. And so I got us a couple of burgers. Went over to Tim at Circle of Concern, had lunch outside yesterday. Yeah, I've had delicious. some of their their baked goods. It's good. Oh my it is gosh. Good. And it's a good local place. It looks incredible. Yeah. It's what's great. The, what's the name of it again? Sweetheart. Sweetheart. Um, but back to pizza for a second. Um, did you, as a kid, did you go out for pizza? Like, was it oh, a yeah. sit-down thing? Pizza, yeah. Pizza in. Moon, and Moon says it's a rarity in his family to go out for pizza. Oh, that you always get it delivered? We always get it delivered. My Growing up, my my parents don't believe in delivery, so we would order pizza. Uh, and pick it up. And my dad would drive to Kirkwood or whatever. And actually, no, we had an Emo's uh, right on Watson, right across from uh, Crystal Plaza, so it, it's not too far. And, and we actually would go in there and sit down and eat sometimes. I love, as a kid, we used to go out for pizza all the time once a week. I yeah. loved going there. Me like too. Like going out to a pizza place. Oh, yeah. It's the thing that can be delivered or a dine-in that is equally good. But but but, di- but, but nobody dines like dine in. Right, it's nobody fresh. dines in anymore. Yeah, yeah. the old we, school we pizza ends and I think we're pretty average as far as this kind of goes. We're away from the dining for pizza. We're away from the pizza dining and it's just a delivery zone. Like we'll go out. To, it's been a while, but like Dewey's is a good dining place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Katie's. Uh, I don't, but I don't consider Katie's a pizza place. That's, we don't live close enough to those. I don't consider that a pizza okay. place. That's a, like somebody. Uh, Personal pizza, like I'm talking, they put a big large yeah, pie okay. on the, you know, on the little tray mm-hmm. or whatever, and everybody's taking slices off the tray. Right. Then if that's the case, I think Dewey's, yeah, that might be Dewey's the East Coast Pizza. We go to. Wait, are those both the the casserole pizzas? Though those are both the thick stuff. Dewey's, like the deep dish, right. the pan. No, Dewey's is not deep. Hand tossed in it. Dewey's is hand tossed. What is your favorite type like of crust? Between. Because I, we've talked about this before, but I feel like I fluctuate throughout the year. Like right now, I'm into a pan pizza, that's more than a thin thick. crust. No, I'll do uh, like a New York style, or I'll do a thin crust, like bar style. Okay. Yeah, thin Tomorrow crust, that. it depends also on the topping, but thin crust 95% of the time, and then hand toss the rest. Um, man, when you were a kid, did you ever play that prank where you ordered a pizza and had it sent to somebody's house? No. <laughs> I, I, don't, I never had the balls to do that. I never had the money to do that. <laughs> oh, you're, it's not you like you're for paying it. for it. Oh, they have to pay. This was back in the day before you yeah. had to put a credit card. Well, this, right, when I yeah. worked at CeCe's Pizza, 
Um, great job. There was a, uh, we'd get that about every month or so. Someone would call in and order like 15. They're going to have a birthday party, all this. So they make all these pizzas with push, puts everything behind. Now you're just hosed over because you're so busy with them, takeout, and then the buffet thing. And so everyone's scrambling to try to get this done. And then, you know, an hour goes by, two hours, no one comes and gets it. And right. Sucks. Oh, no. I, yeah. I mean, back in the day, you would order a pizza and then you'd pay the driver. Mm -hmm. So, you wait. So, so they were calling, they were pranking you. Yeah, they'd prank the pizza place. He's it, talking about, I'm like, talking got, about no, no, pranking a no, no, no. neighbor. I'm talking about pranking a neighbor and sending a pizza to their house. And the pizza guy's like, all right, you know, it's 15 a, bucks. 15 bucks. And you're like, I never ordered this. Right. I've I've never done it. I know people who have done it. Listen, it's a cool prank though, because it's still say, win. Yeah, if it's a, if it was if it's a if it's an emo's pizza or something like that, and somebody does that to me, I'll go. Oh, okay, well, didn't know I needed this. How much was it? Right. Yeah. Like, oh, twenty four bucks. Oh, well, here you go. Well, this is how you take that prank to the extreme. Uh, there's a guy in Canada named uh, Justin Rybicki, and he's been harassed by endless pizza deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been happening for the last six months, and he cannot get it to stop. So at first, they were coming from a place called Pizza 73. Uh, the orders are, are not only using his address, but also his email and his phone number. So they are not being charged to his car, but the delivery drivers do get upset when he says he didn't make the order, and he sends the pizza back. Now, he reported the pizza deliveries to the police from the start. Because he was spooked by how the scammer was using his personal, like personal information in the orders, and he thought I, I, maybe I got hacked or something. Uh, the police told him, "Hey, just just change your phone number," and he did. But can you imagine that having to change your phone number because of this? Yeah, that right. sucks. I'm looking at Pizza Seventy Three too, and if they just sent the basics. <laughs> This is not what you want. It's not, uh, not, not, not a cool prank. So it's a Canadian pizza? He, it just looks like crap. It looks like garbage. Um, <laughs> so the police told him to change his number, so he did that. And that did not stop the deliveries. And they didn't just go to his home. The, the pizzas would also show up at his work. Yeah. So he calls Pizza 73 and tells him, hey, do not accept any orders under my name. <laughs> Block me. <laughs> I'm never ordering this stuff for real. <laughs> this is like one of those, uh, hey, all right, I'm going to lock myself in this room. Whatever I say, don't let me out. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Like, like one of those movies, all right, uh, I'm going to deal with this guy. Whatever I do, don't let, no matter how much I cry, don't let me out. <laughs> so he's like, don't accept any orders under my name. But then the scammer switched to Domino's. So Whoa. now Domino's is coming to his house. If that sounds like dedication, it is. The scammer is also using technology to manipulate the phone number to make it look like Justin is making the call. Wow. Goodness. And this guy doesn't know who would do this. He says it can't be a disgruntled, disgruntled ex because he's, he's never dated anybody. Oh, no. This is, this is somebody in high school or something that has been holding on to this. Well, sounds like a guy that he went to high school with that was a punk that um, worked at 70, Pizza 76. <laughs> and then he called and said, you no longer order this. So then the guy's like, oh, now i got to do this whole thing with Domino's. Pizza 73. 73. Pizza 73. 76 is really good. Uh, he's, well, here, here he is. Here he is talking about it. Here's his, this is the guy being harassed. So I checked my emails and it had an order that I never ordered. So then we told him that it wasn't me that ordered the pizzas. So that's when we called the head office of Pizza 73 and told him that anyone with the name Justin or Mickey cancel the orders. The suspects that are ordering the pizza are actually obviously using technology to spoof his number, which they know. Um, so when they call it, it's coming up as him. I never dated anyone, so <laughs> it's not that. I hope karma gets you someday. And you'll have his pizza to your house. He's like, either somebody hates the pizza places or or they're getting revenge on me or something. He goes, I have no clue. It sounds like there have been around a dozen orders over the past six months involving more than a thousand bucks worth of pizza. Oh, my gosh. See, and that's what he should have done. He should have called and said, listen, <clears throat> you got to block me unless it's prepaid. If they pay for it, <laughs> bring it on over. Mm -hmm. Except for that piece of 73 stuff. Come on. That looks like right. garbage. You get so terrible. sick of it, though. Even the gift of it would be like, oh, God, not again. But then you could just be the pizza guy and knock on your neighbor's door and be like, yeah, another pizza. Every time the doorbell rings, you're like, ah. Oh, Leave it no. at the front. Now, when was the last time, though, you paid a delivery guy at the door? It's been a long it's time. Been a long yeah. time. Like, I remember those days of trying to scrounge up. All right, so uh, got to factor in tip. And then we may have to do quick math at the door. You know, let's just, just keep it. Yeah. 
Hey, oh my gosh! Speaking of tip and quick math, my wife just texted me. Our new fridge is here. We had to, we had to twenty buy, bucks. We had to buy a new fridge. So, twenty bucks. Okay, so she she should tip. So I'm, I do they have to go upstairs? No, no. She emptied the fridge. Like they're very they're very specific. Like you have to have the fridge emptied and unplugged so they can just poof, 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 buy. Yeah. Twenty bucks. Twenty. Uh, that's what it's I would still do. Still a big thing. Yeah. Riz says tip twenty dollars. That's what I would do. And have, Don't have a pizza me. sent to hey, their house. And they're half an hour early. It's, why, it's great. Oh, uh, knock it down a little Even bit. Even better. They're now? Right now. 6.30. First, wow. First delivery of the day. She's freaking out because she can't figure out how to unhook the water hookup. And she's like, help, this is a boy job. <laughs> Will they do that? Help. I said, they can help with that, surely. Um, but you're supposed to have it, like, ready to go. Like no, Sometimes they won't. No and this is around. where the 20 bucks will, hey, give me a hand. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Well, well, hopefully she gets the text. If they say no, we we don't do that, mm -hmm. just go, hey, uh, okay, is she slick like that? What's she like? Can she negotiate I that way? I don't know. She's never tipped me. Well, you've seen her in action. No, no, because usually... You've never seen your wife tip anybody? No, because if Or I'm, try to grease a palm? No, if I'm there, I'm the one that's doing that. You know what I mean? This is going to be good then today. We're going to yeah. find out. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the go-between, typically. Yeah, well, I think my wife and I equally do it. Well, we equally do it, but that's because I'm not there some of the times. But if, if I'm there, she's like, yeah, you take care of this. Hmm. She's, she's always like, oh, she's you, you handle own. this. I don't want to handle it. On this. her own today. <laughs> um, we've all been overseas, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So w when was the last time uh, you were overseas, Lauren? Ooh, it's been a while. Probably 15. Like out in Europe? Yeah. Like you've been to Europe? I've been to Europe. Been to England. Um, God, it's probably been 20 years. Tw uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I know both of you guys have been, you know, overseas before. Yeah, mine's home, getting close to 20. So when you went overseas, did you, uh, you know, we all still had cell phones. Mm -hmm. Do you remember calling the cell phone company and saying you're going to be overseas? Or you even sometimes get a new phone? All the time. I have 12 phones in my basement. <laughs> From, from, <laughs> from different trips. But without getting, too, without getting too much into it, last time we went to, when we went to Israel a couple of years ago, uh, as an AT&T customer, I went to the mm, AT&T yeah, yeah, store yeah. and said, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to be overseas for, you know, two weeks. And, and they put you on a special plan. It's like an extra 20 bucks or something. Yeah, the They'll put you on a plan. The first time I was able, that, that was why I had a BlackBerry for so long. It was because it was the only one that would work overseas. But you would have to get on a special plan. You got to call your bank and get, like, tell them to not take your ATM card. Right. Um, and not cancel your credit cards. There's a lot of, like, stuff that used to go into it. But I have uh, all those phones, which are, they're 20 years old, and they're Nokias. Those little, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Little handheld guys. Because... There was a different system back then. It was like GSM and then this other one and, and you know. Yeah, now they, it's yeah. now it's everybody kind of shares networks and it's so, it's a lot easier now. Yeah, I would right. have to travel with three phones when we go over there because I I needed one in Germany, I needed one in England, and there was a different one somewhere else. And yeah. I, they, these weren't even necessarily for phone calls. They were like for emergencies or getting a hold of the kids or something. Mm -hmm. well, even, but now it's now it's easy to do. Even you don't even yeah. have to go oh, to the store. It's, it's a breeze. You don't even have to go into the store. Sometimes you can just go to the website and go. All right, here's what, and there'll be a drop down menu. Like here's where I'm traveling to. Yeah, and they'll just put it on your bill. The last couple of times I haven't even switched anything. I just used Wi-Fi, and I was able to get away with yeah. it then. I just remember back in the day, though, I was always so like, if you had to take a picture of the phone or thing, I was so nervous that I might accidentally use data. You know, and get and charged. And this is like, going to be my point. Oh, and I, this is my point here. I had a twenty nine hundred dollar bill in Canada. Wow. Oh, uh -huh. dang. All right, ready? From one uh, to uh, Robert. Ready for this? Oh, boy. <laughs> Rogers. <and me. laughs> this, <laughs> this is a nightmare for this uh, one fella named Rene who uh, went with his wife out there, uh, went to Switzerland. Nice. Three weeks in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. They're from Florida. They got home. They got a uh, surprise cell phone bill. Yeah. Uh oh, Moon's leaving. Moon, something's going oh. on with the fridge. Oh, no. Something's going on with the fridge. Emergency call. <laughs> Make sure you're leaving the room. Oh, man. I mentioned sure something with water. Anyway, Moon data. just got up and left. Uh, okay, so this guy got a surprise cell phone bill when he got home. So he and his wife, so they travel frequently, and, and they always notify their cell phone carrier before they, you know, plan to leave the U.S., which you should. And in, in, in this case, uh, Renee has been a T-Mobile customer for 30 years. Wow. He went to the T-Mobile store to share his travel plans. Uh, and they said at the store, like, hey, man, you're covered. 
you're covered. Whatever that meant. Have a good time. Have a good time in Switzerland. How nice he Look at the cuckoo clocks and get some chocolate. Yes. And the couple said, Renee and the wife said, the trip was magical. Toured the countryside, Uh, spent time with family and friends. Perfect. And Renee said, I never gave a second thought to the pictures and messages he was sending during their time away. Mm -hmm. Because remember, he was covered. Check out this windmill. Then he gets home. Gets the T-Mobile bill, looks at it, and thought, thought it said 143 bucks. Oh, my God. It wasn't until a couple of days later that he discovered the actual amount was $143,000. Whoa. <laughs> uh, $143,000 for using 9.5 gigabytes of data while overseas. Now, 5 to 10 gigabytes is considered average for a month. But in this case, it was all roaming data. Oh, gosh. Can you imagine? So, and that costs thousands of dollars. So every day of the trip, it was just, uh, the, his phone was on Rome. He was sending pictures, doing whatever out there on the Swiss Alps. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he had nothing just, to worry about. The bill was just Racking going up and up and up and up and up and up. $143,000. So he said he immediately called T-Mobile. And waited on hold while a representative reviewed the charges. She gets back on the phone. She goes, no, this is a good bill. This is a good bill. And he says, what do you mean it's a good bill? Well, that's what you owe. Yeah. Wow. $143,000. So then he he hires an attorney who wrote letters to the president of T-Mobile but got no response. And that's when, I guess, uh, he's down in Tampa, contacted the the local news down there, and they Mm -hmm. kind of tried to help him out. Wow. Yeah, you got to have awareness of this. I mean, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, so what happened? Did so he... they wind up, so the, the news wound up contacting T-Mobile's corporate offices. A couple of days later, somebody from T-Mobile called Renee and said they, they credited his, his account. Oh, thank God. Like, so he he's all right. He's off the hook. Because he's if he had not gone into the store, though, I bet it would be a different. Well, and the fact that they said, oh, ah, you're good. Here yeah. he is talking about it. So I called, and the girl put me on hold for a while, and she says, let me, you know, let me check this out and get back to you. She gets back, yeah, no, this is a good bill. What do you mean it's a good bill? Well, this is what you owe. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? As my response, what do you mean it's a good bill? What do you mean? hmm Yeah, that's wild, man. And T-Mobile says, hey, listen, we recommend our customers check the travel features on their plan, such as international data roaming before departing. If a customer is on an older plan that doesn't include international roaming for data and calling, they'll need to make sure they're using airplane mode and the Wi-Fi when when using your phone because the device doesn't connect to an international network. Hmm. What a weird thing. Like, what, is, what even is that? How, we, how does that all work? How does the data know that we're international? It's a system of tubes. I don't know. But how, but it, dude, if I start going down this hole of like wireless thinking and how it all works and how it knows that I'm in a different place and we all just take that for granted. You don't need to know. Mm -hmm. I know. Just, just know that this guy got a $143,000 bill. Oh my gosh. What do I need to know? Cause I'm going, I'm going over next month. His his data was roaming the whole time. So. And how does one know this? It usually says on your phone roaming. And he went into the store and said, Hey, I'm going to be going to Switzerland. And they're like, you're good, you're covered. That's and the problem. He oh, well, then checked. Then he's fine, right? Oh, well, he wound up having to contact a lawyer and... And the news and, and the going news to the president and of the company. The Whoa. president of T-Mobile credited him like, you're okay. He's an old guy. Whoa. What kind of phone was he? You see that? It was a T-Mobile. And that's why I... It was air- a Nextel. Well, just the... the <laughs> yeah, that's why the, I airplane it. The takeaway here is airplane it. Yeah. I if, you're, if you're overseas and you're not sure or you're not on a resort with Wi-Fi... Just, yeah. just that's the fortunate thing about what I do airplane. is I'm in venues or hotels um, or airports that all have Wi-Fi. So for the most part, unless I'm on the road, and you know what, it's actually kind of nice, guys. I get to drive. Oh, it'd be very nice. Get to drive a few hours in the bus with no no access to anything. No it's, connection. It's awesome. I just remember whenever I worked for uh, Warped Tour one summer, I worked for Singular at the time, and they gave us free phones to use all summer long, and they had cameras and stuff like that. It was when they were kind of rolling those out. And we went to Canada, and I got to use that bad boy everywhere. Oh, yeah. It didn't matter. Uh, it was Haas awesome. says, uh, had a soldier who had a uh, $6,000 phone bill of roaming charges in the Philippines. One week of roaming. Oh, my God. Dang. Jeff just got back from Fiji. Now he's definitely afraid to look at the bill. Uh, yeah, well, 
You just got to be careful of that stuff. People out there trying huh. to take advantage. You think the cell phone care? Yeah, I remember what he called the cell phone carrier. They're like, no, it's a good bill. It's a good bill. It's a good bill. And $143,000. That could ruin your life. Well, of course. We're on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we're dude. retired. But so most people would maybe just pay it instead of fighting it. When you were in Jamaica, did you have to call? Or is it like Mexico where... <sighs> you got you got to look to see if that's all part. Usually some of those you know, Caribbean countries are all connected to... Okay. Because that's like one planet. nice thing with like, Mexico. It's like in North America. Like you're like... Because I think my AT&T, whatever plan I'm on, I'm covered in North America. Okay. North America and the Caribbean. Mm. That's awesome. Hey, speaking of scams... Um, a woman in Ohio was robbed by a person claiming to be um, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, the quarterback? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, this this poor woman. Um, they met on a messaging app called uh, Viber. And uh, she and, quote, uh, Aaron talked for a couple months. Uh, she was confident it was him because the profile picture had a picture of uh, Aaron wearing a Green Bay Packers hat. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. This checks out. These kind of stories make me so sad. No, mm -hmm. it makes me think we are so doomed. Like, if we think deep fakes are problematic, this woman is saying, oh, this is Aaron Rodgers because she saw a photo of Aaron Rodgers. Wearing a, a Packers hat. Yeah. Remember, he played for, and he was playing for the Jets at the time. Well, he's currently with the Jets. But, uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, wear, it's him. It's got a hat on. <laughs> it says the Packers. And remember, Aaron Rodgers was quarterback for the yeah. Packers for all that time? Um and he talked about himself personally. <laughs> he, what else do you need to know? He needs some money. I can help. So she was so sure he was legit because, well, she was so sure he was legit that uh, she gave him her driver's license info and social security number and bank account details. Hmm. And if you're wondering why Aaron would need this random Ohio woman's bank accounts, he'd say things like, I'll send you 10 grand to help you move out of your apartment. But first, you need to send me 800 bucks to my lawyer's wife. You need to send 800 bucks to my lawyer's wife. So I'll send you 10 grand, but you need to first send 800 bucks to my lawyer's wife. Wow. And the police are investigating, but they're, they're not really making much headway on this. In the meantime, they've... They've told her to block Aaron on social media, freeze all her accounts, change her passwords, monitor her credit. They're not saying how much she lost in total. But she wants her quarterback. But she, listen, she says she's going to be all right because uh, Travis Kelsey has offered to cover her losses. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's him. But because... she needs a Venmo, uh, <laughs> Taylor Swift, a uh, thousand bucks first. Yeah. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, if you, if, you, if you sense a friend or family member like falling, for something dumb online, strongly encourage them to be protective of their personal information. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this is an older woman. Yeah. You know, letting a scammer have access to your accounts can just be a huge, costly, time-consuming nightmare. And yes, there are vulnerable people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are stupid people out there. Oh, yes. And when you combine stupid and vulnerable... Yeah, it's a disaster. Speaking of stupid, speaking of dumb, to just throw away your career, and 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 this is a story that's making uh, national headlines, and it's got a hint of local. It's got a hint of a local, local thing here, because it it's a guy who played for Mizzou. Okay. And I think this guy is originally from Columbia, uh, Missouri. Toronto Raptors forward, John Tate Porter's NBA career is donezo, over. Mm -hmm. Bye. Came to an abrupt end yesterday. The gambling? It's the gambling. Yeah. Uh. So, John Tate Porter, uh, brother of uh, Michael Porter, who is, is he a nugget? Ooh, is Michael Porter uh, a nugget? Yes, I think so. Michael Porter's good. Like, he's a, he's a star. The brother, I mean, obviously good enough to make it into the NBA. I mean, was was uh, you know good enough player at Mizzou, right? Got drafted, plays for the Toronto or played for the Toronto Raptors. 
But to throw away your career and now just be known for this Sucks. is it's just stupidity. So 24 year old John T. Porter banned for life for breaking gaming rules. Goodbye forever. Forever. Wait, wait to hear the details here. So in a news release, uh, the NBA says uh, an investigation found that John T. Porter, quote, violated league rules by disclosing confidential information to sports bettors, limiting his own participation in one or more games for betting purposes listen, and for betting on NBA games. Listen to some of the details. It almost seems, when you read these details, it almost seems like he doesn't, he think, he may have been so stupid that he thought he was the first one to have this idea. Like he didn't or to think, think he could get away with it. I, I, uh, dude, I almost think like, I'm going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt and maybe think that he never heard that this could be illegal and this could be really bad and this <laughs> might be against the league rules and it might be something that people have been busted for in the past. Right. And Pete rose this and Pete rose that. Who? So for those in the room here that don't know how this all works, so stop me if I'm if I'm, I'm getting in the weeds on some of the details here okay. and ask me questions because I just I want to make sure I explain this right. So so this is so basically they're focused in on the NBA. Um on a March March 20th game. Okay, John T. Porter, quote, disclosed confidential information about his own health status to an individual he knew to be an NBA better. Right. Which probably one of his buddies. So basically, he, this during this one game, he knew he was going to take himself out of the game. Right. So he, I don't know if he really was hurt or he was going to pretend to be hurt. So he told this other person, hey, bet on me not doing certain things, yes. like being under a certain amount of points, being under a certain amount of minutes played. What are those because bets called? Prop bets. Prop bets, yes. So bet on me being under these things. Bet the house on it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to take myself out of the game, guaranteeing you a win. Right. So, John T. Porter took himself out of the March 20th game after less than three minutes, saying he was sick, ill. So, the person he told about this won $1.1 million. So, he put $80,000 on John T. Porter to be under these stats and then wound up winning off the $80,000, $1.1 million. So, and I forget what service it was. It was FanDuel or DraftKings. They were like, wait a minute. Odd. This is odd because this, this is not a player n normally somebody would do this right. for. There's red flag number one. This is not LeBron James. Sure. Mm -hmm. This is not, uh, you know, Anthony Davis. This is not one of these superstars, you know, Steph Curry. This is not, there's a lot of, there's a lot of juice on this guy that there nor they shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not a superstar. He, you know, he scores, you know, I think he averages four point something points a game. You know, he's he's your kind of middle of the road guy. Well, I wonder, do people have attention to kind of periphery players though? Is that a normal thing in sports betting? Sure. Okay. Sure, but somebody wouldn't put this amount of money on that. I see. So and, that was and it's it was a red flag. Yeah, that's a trigger for whoever is monitoring the system. It, it yeah, so DraftKings or FanDuel, they were like, "Whoa," and they they wind up not paying it out. Hmm. Wow. So the league says the payout was frozen because of this unusual activity. And they were told about suspicious bets to Jonte Porter's performance by licensed sports betting operators in an organization that monitors legal betting markets. So, bing, red flag, they contact the NBA. Mm -hmm. The NBA said John T. Porter also used an associate's account, so not under his name, but was betting under somebody else's name, to place at least 13 bets on NBA games in the first three months of this year. Now, he didn't play in any of the games, but three bets were multi-game parlay bets that included at least one of his games, in which Porter, John T. Porter bet that his team would lose. Okay, and that sucks. Dang. And the league does note that John T. Porter did lose all those bets. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, good. He did lose all those bets. I wonder so if he did that So he's really on good purpose. at this. This is like his thing. Like, do you think that he was trying to purposefully make bets to lose? No, I just... Uh, I think he was trying to win. 
But okay. You saw it, the total, right? Did you say that? Did you say that? Well, one point one million dollars for the one for the one bet on March twentieth. No, like uh, what they said that like all in all, his winnings totaled about twenty one thousand dollars. Yes. Oh. So he was not very so he good. Gave at this. All he gave all this up. Yeah, but the ones that the, the tips that he gave his buddies or the one buddy right. about the March twentieth. Yeah, game, that, it made got him one point one million dollars. It which, made a bunch of other people money, but like he, the bets that he, they said that the which bets I'm sure, that he had, I mean, totaled about twenty one thousand, which ain't gonna cover a lost career. Mm -mm. It's no. well, and also not. It, I'm not going to be naive enough to say that he didn't take some money from the friends that were doing the work. That were yeah. doing the work. Um, and the NBA commissioner says, there's nothing more important than protecting the integrity of NBA competition for our fans, our teams, and everyone associated with the sport. Which is why Jonte Porter's blatant violations of our gaming rules are being met with the most severe punishment. Done. Dang. Career. Over. Wow. Banned. NBA. That's it. If I'm under stupid. No jail this time? Um, like, is getting banned enough? And what about the friend? Is he just guilty by association? Does he get any jail time? Or how, I don't understand how this works with gambling like that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what the laws are. I mean, it's kind of like insider trading. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah, like getting a tip on a stock before, you know, something happens. Sure. And moving money around. I'm, I'm not sure the legalities of it. I'm not sure if the friend could get in trouble. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this guy, I mean... Sports betting now is is integrated into into the games. Right. Yeah. And the sad thing is, it looks like in the NBA, your minimum salary for a player with zero years of experience is one point one million dollars. Is that right? It's on. Um, that's a league minimum. That's a league minimum. I mean, he's making. You're you hit the lottery already. Just getting. Into oh the yeah, NBA. You're, the, you're the you know one your percent life. of the one percent to make the NBA. Yeah, you just bought mom a home. Well, and, and his brother is a star. Dang. That, he had everything. I mean, he had everything. What are you doing, man? That sucks. I wonder what I wonder if he went into his his athletic career thinking that that was gonna be his play and to and th that it was all premeditated, or did somebody influence him and say, Oh, you gotta do this? Because I mean, most people get into sports, they know they're gonna make a ton of money, they want that career, they're living their dream, they don't do this. And so it's almost like he was so naive and young. I wonder if he was impressionable by somebody who was do has been doing this yeah. for a while. Right, yeah. I was just telling him, like, hey, yeah. you should do this. I mean, look at the money we it. can make. Right. Yeah, Yeah. nobody will know. Just, you know, or he, or I don't know if he was the ringleader. Like, hey, I'll, t I'll take myself out of the game. N right. Nobody will be the wiser. I don't know. So is he? he's just banned from the NBA. That, can he still play in Europe? And I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. Because I hope he understands his goof here and... Repents of that, and uh, well, Derek says Jonte's worth two million. His brother's worth two hundred million. He's never has to worry about money. It's an addiction. Yeah. What do you mean? So he's just gonna live in his brother's house the whole? Hey, all, nice basement. Time I come in. I'm not sure that's. <laughs> Listen, gambling. You know, you can have a gambling addiction. It's it's that's a thing. Sure. Yeah. And well, it's so easy now to just open up your app, open up your phone, open up an app, and start throwing bets down. It's easy. Yep. Just seems like such a dopey thing. Of it's course, it's a dopey, dopey thing. thing. Like, threw it all dude, away. I, 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 in my, in my mind, I imagine him thinking like, "Oh man, that's a great idea." Whether he had it or heard it, <laughs> it was like, "Oh, you're right." I mean, like, yeah. I mean, just, nobody's getting hurt. Let's just try it. And then finds himself four or five things deep, and then busted. And what? Uh, oh no! What did I? What have I done? What have I done? Wasn't me. Oh no, it was you. Oh. Yeah, the fact that the uh the, the red flags went up about, hey, why is there a lot of action on Jonte Porter on <laughs> March twentieth? <20th? laughs> right. Weird. I what was what was March twentieth? Was it like a what day of the week was it? it? Must have been a very exciting game. I see. March twentieth was my birthday. Like a Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Like why is there so much action on Jonte Porter on a Wednesday on a Wednesday NBA game? Weird. Ah, Gosh. eighty grand. Stupid. Jeez. Oh man, and and yeah, Steve brings up a good point here. Do you think they'll be looking into bets he made, maybe through his college career, possibly? <sighs> How many years was he in the NBA? Um, two. Because he is what? He's young. I think he's in it two seasons. So, that's it for him. But I, 
I can't believe you got a red flag. I mean, they were playing Sacramento Kings on the 20th. That's a pretty exciting game. Toronto and the Kings. And Well, he was a Raptor, right? And you said he was betting on the Raptors to lose. Yeah. So he was in, throwing games. That's dumb. Or, or potentially throwing games. I mean, but Potentially. He wound up losing those bets, though. <laughs> like, he would include the Raptors in, like, a three-game parlay, meaning, like, putting bets together. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's 20, that. 24. 24. That's that. You threw it all away. Hope it was worth it. Man, okay, so he'd only played two seasons. Let's say another, I mean, 12 seasons, right? 12 seasons. I, listen, I don't know what the average lifespan know. of a NBA player is. I mean, we're talking... Not living, but how, how long they play for. Right. Let's see. Average <laughs> NBA career. The average NBA career. What? That can't be. 18, 18 years? seasons? Yeah, no. I was say. There's no way. 18 seasons? That makes sense. How old? 18 seasons? That's how too Think how many He's good young age. players come in every that's year pushing long. that mediocre guy out. I don't think that's too long. I feel like that's no very normal. 18 years is a normal amount of time. Uh, the average fast. the average basketball career lasts four and a half years. Four and a half years. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. The average career length of an NBA player is four and a half years. Only five percent of NBA players last more than fourteen seasons. Huh. Nearly well, sixty percent of NBA play, NBA players have a career that span two seasons or less. Yeah. So okay. So four and a half years. Well, let's say he was getting so, a okay. little over the league minimum, two so, million. So he he just threw away. Eight million in salary. Okay, so they so th the way the num these numbers would work would be okay. So only five percent of players last more than fourteen. Sixty percent, which is the majority, last two seasons or less. So the five percent is skewing the numbers. So it's probably, in reality, well, something that I've... it's in, in reality less than four and a half years. Yeah, wow. something I forgot about after you know being a kid and watching nineties basketball. And kind of coming back to it and finding more interest is, man, remember, there are very few players on these rosters. So when new, fresh blood comes in and they're kicking ass and it's like... Somebody's out. Yeah, LeBron the guys that aren't hanging has anymore. 21 years in his career right I mean, now. It'd be an anomaly. I mean, that is the that is not the norm. And like Michael Jordan, how many career, how many seasons? Yeah, but these are the best of the best. I know. Dang. Four and a half years seems, seems even high, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Fifteen seasons sports. for Michael Jordan. All right. All right. Here's a couple of would you rather questions. How about that before we uh, before we move on? And I'm curious to see what your opinions on this would be. Okay. Because I want to live forever. Me too. I want to be old as hell and having some young. I want to be old as I want to be old as hell. Would you rather want to live to ninety with some health problems or a shorter, healthier life? Ninety with some health problems. Yeah. Shorter, meaning like 81? <laughs> or 89. Now you or get 45 like, great years. Let's say the average. The average, average is 76 now. 77.5 is the, is the average U.S. life expectancy. For fellers, it's lower. I think it's 76 for us. I'm toughing it. You so toughing you, it to 90? You're, you're saying 90 with... 90 like, with some health problems. Not, and some health problems not hmm. specified. Or, or down to 77? Psh. Yeah, 90. Yeah. Because I'm still here. I'm still able to give whatever I have to my family. As long as my brain works. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to so leave got, everybody yet. Get diapers. I get the whole thing. Some fun. health problems, though. Uh, what is it? Like arthritis? No, I don't know. Chronic diarrhea? I'm down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sign me up. I'm here. Just do yeah, I think I'm going to take the 90. Oh, man. That's tough, though. Yeah. Because most people, two-thirds of people would take the shorter. Sure. People want quality over quantity. Two thirds would take the shorter. I don't. I mean, as long as my brain is functioning. <laughs> to my shorter and perfect. Shorter and healthier. I understand why someone would do that, but I I got a feeling that like, I mean, I know. Listen, my mother's eighty three or whatever she is, and she's like, you know, she she even said to me the other day, she goes, I have zero pain, zero pains at all. I walk every day, you know, twice a day. She's got her whole thing. Like, can you imagine feeling like that at seventy five and mm -hmm. going, oh gosh. I elected to check out next year. Yeah. No way. Yeah. They'll, all, they'll all panic. You'll, you'll panic because you you'll realize. You'll regret that immediately. I think maybe as you get closer and closer to that average life expectancy, your your, your answer is going to change. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like 75, like you can, 75 is a good. She's playing with house money now. If, if you take your, if, if, yeah, if you, if you, uh, if just take care of yourself in the basics uh, of, of ways, psh, 
You can be. There's a lot of spry seventy five year olds, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about this one? Would you rather die in 20 years with no regrets or live to 100 with lots of regrets? 100 with lots of regrets. Because that means you actually live. <laughs> live? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Give me the 100 with lots have, of regrets. You got to have some regrets. Because that, if your life is so perfect, you regret nothing. What if, you, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. Or you're just full of crap. <laughs> right. You don't we understand. We all have regrets. Yeah, you of don't course. understand but how in much church, of In church lingo, I would rather live to 100, so I have a lot of testimonies to give you. Yes, of course. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that whole no regrets thing. Get no the regrets. Out of here. Yeah. No yeah. Regrets. Get the f out of here. That's a cheap. You people pop are yeah. living off of Target, you know, signs that you put in your dining room. Yeah, that that's just a platitude sense. that makes no sense. It really you does. Have some regret. Yeah. yeah that's how how you else are you going to learn? I, that's, I was say, I think it's an actually it's a dangerous way to live. It, because, Very dangerous. Because you're just ignoring. <clears throat> Anything that you may have done that either damaged other people or right. damaged yourself, exactly. and you're not taking any responsibility for things that you need to change. Well, you're not going to learn. Like, how are you going to learn? But that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's okay to have good. regrets. It's reproof okay. is good. It's all right. Now, do I regret robbing the bank and murdering the hooker? Of course. Yes. I shouldn't have done that. But <laughs> I, have done that. I met my best friend in jail. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Skippy. So no regrets. So no regrets. regrets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you rather switch places with a spider or a mouse? Oh, spider, hands down. Which one lives longer? <laughs> spider or a mouse? Spider, because every, I mean, people are afraid of both, but I feel like spiders can still chill in your house and you can be afraid of it, but like let it live. Mouses or mice, just people will kill them immediately. It does seem like a mouse is uh, more susceptible to violent deaths. Either from traps uh, or hawks or snakes or something. Yes. What about That's a something? shoe to a spider? Yeah, yeah, but if I'm a spider, quick. I'm a clever spider. I'm no, I'm nowhere near you. She's a recluse. I'm gonna be a tarantula too. Yeah, dude, I, I'm in an attic. You didn't know I existed. My entire life happened, and you I'm, had I'm no in the clue. shadows. And yeah. I can live anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, live, I live in the shadows. Yeah, I want to say spider. I'm a long leg though. You so. could be itty bitty. You could be big. You could be anything. Mice, you're just one size. I'm gonna be a jumping spider. Yeah, I want to instill a little fear in people. Yeah, we had that. Like pet, that's why I'm going to be a spider. We had that pet jumping spider, and it's like it's still a spider, but it's cute. Mice are cute too. Oh. Yeah, I agree. But I, I like and the, they're soft. Oh, they're the so hawks, sharp. the snakes. I the, pet myself. The, everything mouse. else yeah. that's after mice. I don't know. I just feel like you're, you know, you're, uh, you're the goldfish. Right. Of, and you're getting experimented yeah, on of the mammal world. People leave spiders the hell alone. Yeah, yeah spiders have it made. Spiders. Yeah. All right. Would you rather find a rat in your kitchen or a roach, uh, roach in your bed? Ooh. Um, rat in your kitchen or roach in your bed? Oh, rat. Rat, rat. in the kitchen. Rat Easier to handle. Yeah. I rat. can't deal with things being in the bed. My hypogogic and you could train hallucinations. It. Whoa. Rat in the kitchen for 100%. Yeah. Roach in the bed. When you see one roach, you know there are many roaches. Exactly. Which kind of roach? And they can you survive everything. You know what I'm everything. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Are we talking doobie roach? Like that? No, we're not. Bro. No, we're talking <laughs> burn roach? holes Cockroach. in the seat, dude. <laughs> Rats, another drug term. Now, also, know. yeah. Also, if you see one rat, there are probably others. Uh, the more mind F for me is as you're sleeping, there are roaches crawling on you. And how many did you eat in your sleep? Probably many. Uh, would you rather have chapped lips or dandruff you could never get rid of? <laughs> oh, man. Dandruff I could never get rid of. I cannot stand chapped lips. Drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah I'd horses. rather have... Or seeing somebody with chapped lips and you go, you know... Drink some water. Drink yeah. some water or th there's a chapstick available <laughs> pretty much. bees, dude. <laughs> like, there's a CVS across the street, buddy. You go. gotta grab some chapstick. Yeah, can you imagine everywhere you go, people asking you, do you need a drink of water or something? You look I'm like, very self-conscious <laughs> about thirsty. that. You just look like I'm self-conscious about my hands. I'm always putting lotion on and lip... Uh, chapstick on on the show. YouTube probably sees it all the time. But people, if I ever post anything, I'm holding something... On social media, people are like, oh, my God, your hands are so dry. Like, everybody makes fun of how dry my hands are. So I'm really self-conscious about that and my chapped lips. Now I want to put parched. chapstick on. Yeah. All right. And listen, if you, have, if you have dandruff, you can never get rid of. Uh, okay, so you've eliminated black shirts out right. of your... Yep. Which is a problem for my Which wardrobe. is fine. And move next to the ocean so there's a lot of wind. You'll never notice it. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do when you see somebody with dandruff? You know? well, we oh, I do. point I laugh like, real hard. I, I have friends and people in my life where I'll, like, if I see they got a little, I'm like, <laughs> getting it no, off I'm of their shoulder. Yeah. Uh, we had a, I had a buddy that had, he was bad on some health issues, so he had dandruff, he'd get it pretty rough, and he had to wear dark blue suits. Mm -hmm. 
And so we said, uh, hey, man, it's snowing again. And he'd go into the bathroom and clean it oh. up. So that was our code word, so he knew, like, oh. He's like, yeah, it's snowing. Dude, I get it every once in a while. It depends on the shampoo. And it depends, because, like, you know, one day I'll be in this hotel and I'm using that shampoo, and then I'll bring my stuff, and then, it, I don't know. I, I, I get it every once in a while. All right, would you I would much rather have that than chap lips. Yeah. Would you rather date somebody with, with an overbearing ex or somebody with overbearing parents? Oh, man, both so annoying. <laughs> would you <laughs> rather date someone with, with an overbearing ex or somebody with an overbearing... This one's kind of easy, ex, though. Yeah, this is easy. Overbearing ex. Because yeah. that is getting more judgment externally from everyone, whereas overbearing parents, nobody ever really judges that. People want to empathize with, oh, my gosh, the ex won't leave your partner alone, and that sucks. Nobody's going to say, like, yeah, yeah, your partner's mom's a huge witch. Z-word. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, there's a chance that one goes away. Right. The parents are there forever. For life. Mm-hmm. If Not they a, suck, you're, it's over. And you probably quote, get bad Christmas the problems. Gifts. What's that? Not if I quote, take care of the problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, what? Hello. Goodness. Right That's by Scott. my ear. Sorry. <laughs> That's what Scott would say. Yeah, I normally don't do those jokes, but today I had to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's take a break. But first... All right, that's uh, brought to us by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill, St. Louis home for Blues hockey, which the season ended last night. Uh, today we celebrate uh, Michael Wally from Scott City, Missouri. Yeah, best town in the world. Which, if we rolled into that place, boom, sh- we got to go down there. Where the hell is Scott City, Missouri? In it down south, I think it's it's by Cape, right? Go, go there. We need to go there. Yeah, I think let's we do need it. To, I you think should we do a gathering a of the Scots. You yeah. guys could lead it. Because they do that. They do a gathering uh, of like. There is a gathering of the Tylers in Tyler, Texas. It's coming up next month. I know somebody who's going. See? See we could family. do a gathering do of Scott the Scots. City. We have family in right. Tyler. It's down by Cape. Yes, it's yeah. further than Cape. Uh, right off of 55. That would be yeah. hilarious. Yeah. We could do that. We could go there. It's not far. Set a record. We eat Lambert's too on our way down and uh, really celebrate. I'm Michael, down. Michael has been a original listener since 2017. Tells everyone he knows about the show. Converted many of his friends into daily listeners. Thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, loves matchup with Moon because he always learns something he wasn't aware of before, and because it's a fun game to play along with. Loves Moon's intelligence. Uh, learns love for animals. My ability to complain about anything. <laughs> nice. Uh, Rafe's comedy and King Scott's. Presents. All right, I'll take it. Three out of five stars. I give good presents. Michael Wally from Scott City, Missouri, is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. Is there any uh, notable residents of Scott City? Well, look at History Museum there. The dead center of town, and I mean like what this town is built around. A Casey's. Casey's. A this Casey's. This is a good Generals. small Let's town. And go. That is a good small town. You the Casey's the right and a Dollar General. That seems to be it. Yeah, this is Shelbina. <laughs> oh, it's a Subway and a Pizza Hut. They got way this more. Do they have a Taco Bell down or a Taco John's down there? Wow. Uh, listen, we got to take a break. We'll come back. We have the Craigslist Freak of the Week for you. We have three brand new ads. Learn's going to read the ads. You guys will vote for your favorite ad. But first, you need to name the ads. So Moon will be monitoring the Riz Show chat room. Name the ads, we vote, learn reads. Free of the week is next. It's 7 Eleven. It's Thursday. Traffic and Weather Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more in the NASCAR Cup Series. June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at wwtraceway.com. Right hand shoulder blocked due to a stall vehicle, 170 southbound at 70. Also, severe delays, 70 eastbound between Bryan Road and Mid River Small Drive. Your point forecast, some severe storms likely. High of 82 right now at 60 at the Point Studio. The Riz Show, phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The socials at R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails, Riz Show, 1057thepoint.com. All right, Craigslist Freak of the Week here in just a moment. Comedian George Wallace will be here. Legendary. Legendary. Legendary comedian George Wallace, who's at Helium Comedy Club tomorrow and Saturday, and he's doing shows with Marsha Warfield, who was Roz in Night Court. She used to have her own talk show, too. Wow. Which I believe, I believe was just called Marsha. So George Wallace here at 9 o'clock. Um, today 
is National High Five Day. High five. Now, it's always the third Thursday in April, uh, but should probably be October 2nd instead, and I'll tell you why. Do you know the history of the high five? Do you know when the very first high five happened? Yes, After something was, good um, happened? When it like 73 or 4, and it was a baseball team. Yes, 1977. 77, okay, and it was... Oh, man, was it a White Sox player? No one knows for sure okay. when the very first high five happened. But or Brewers. credit usually goes to former MLB coach Dusty Baker and his old teammate Glenn Burke. Hmm. Dude, it's a, it's a crazy story. I'm sorry, what? For the, for the high five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In humanity? The first, the first official high five was given oh, in 1977. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, dude, ESPN did a 30 for 34. Oh, for, come on. For it. It's like ancient Egyptians or something. Like, well, he, I, he I don't think been high fiving since they could. Oh, look at the hieroglyphics. Uh, the, the high, high fives high left and right. I mean, think about it. When they're, when the, you know, the hands, the hier or the, uh, like the cave paintings of the mm -hmm. hands, that's just a future high five. Mm -hmm. Dude, night, I choose to believe it's 1977. Uh uh. Cavemen. Caveman high fives. Former MLB coach Dusty Baker, his old teammate Glenn Burke, they were playing for the Dodgers. And they smacked hands together during the last game of the season on October 2nd. Again, ESPN did a, did a whole thing on it. And Dusty Baker's pretty modest about the whole thing. No, I didn't invent the high five. All I did was respond to Glenn. On the on-deck circle was Glenn Burke, the excited rookie. Glenn put his arm high in the air, and Dusty wasn't sure what to do, so he slapped it. You can go anywhere around the world, and people know what that is. Yeah. Everyone wants that moment, and the high five made it accessible to everybody. When you look at how it's changed the world, and it's a universal symbol for all of us to share. Sometimes you don't know why you do some of the things you do, especially when you're extremely happy. You just respond to each other. Put his hand up like, hey, and then Dusty Baker just slapped it. There and it they is. were looking at each other's elbows, too, so it was like perfect. Well, what the heck are you talking about? What do you mean? This is ESPN. This is stupid. Right. You hey, tell me the high I five knew, four years old. I know about this is legit. <laughs> the official high five may be four years older than you. Wrong. I think it was in the 50s at least. People were high-fiving <laughs> they, each other. They just said it. To, not the 1950s, just the 50s. The yeah, high-five. Like, yeah, the 50th year of civilization. <laughs> the high-five. I don't want to believe that. 1977. Out of your mind. Erroneous. Fans immediately thought, what are those two guys doing? That's cool as hell. And the Dodgers embraced it as their, quote, official way to celebrate. Hmm. I don't want the Dodgers having anything. Listen, the first, <laughs> the first high-five might have been the coolest one ever, but there have been plenty of bad high-fives since 1977. And you probably screwed it up before. We all have. Oh yeah. But and I did I tell you about I told you about the how to do a proper high five, Scott. I think I've talked about it on the air. Did I just say it, Craig? Did I say it? Okay. <laughs> so there's a website, and I'm I can't take credit for it. Uh, there's a website called howtobeadad.com. And they have a very thorough explanation on how to high five. So here are the four steps to make sure you never screw up that high five again. Go. Number one, form your hand into a flat surface with your fingers together. Okay. Spread them out, or spreading them out too much could minimize that satisfying smacking sound. Okay. You can also try cupping your hand a little bit for a, for a chance that it's going to even be louder. Oh. Recognize or declare that a high five is about to happen. I do declare. I declare high I five. Declare. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You don't have to yell high no. five. I shall five in the high. You don't have to <laughs> yell high five, but just to make sure there's no confusion, make eye contact. <laughs> don't change your mind and go for a fist bump instead. Don't you do and it. And God Scott. help you if you shift into an awkward hug. Oh, God. Both people must be committed to the high five. All right. Mm-hmm. Hang on, I'm gonna move. Step again. three, stay calm. Let's see if we can figure this stay out. Stay calm. Be ready to move in unison. Don't panic. Try to rush it. Hang on. You're not swatting at a B. It's not a competition. Just be smooth. Okay. Be cool. And number four, this is the most important one. Look at the elbow, not the hand. Oh my God. Look at the elbow, not the hand. Your brain will automatically know where your hand needs to be, and you'll make better contact. It's especially helpful with running high fives where you, you've got more moving parts. Okay, here we go. Look at the elbow. We better hear a pop. 
Oh, that's that was, pretty that good. Was, that was a little off. That was a little okay, off. Like, you know what? Because her hands are up. Okay. Oh, my God. It's so great to see yeah. you, Jim. What's up? Yeah. That was great. That was a great high five. There we go. That was the... That was the the burst of Baker guys. high five right there. What kind of what kind of follow through do you typically do? Because you guys just did the car crash, you know, where it's, it's, they just both stop. Yeah, right. Crash test dummies. Right. I try to push the arm down. <laughs> you made, my opponent's arm down. You but, air uh, arm wrestle. Yeah, yeah. I like to, I like to fall back. No man. It's no, I like to do the. Good, I do the high five, five, then I put it behind my back so they can hit it. I like it to be slow. very very gentle and. A nice soft. Ah, man, afterwards. I like a good like. Slap me, yeah. I, I, like I a good high five. I saw my friend Brian yesterday at a gas station randomly, and uh, <laughs> high five. He's like ten feet taller than me, and I was on the phone, and I was like, "Oh man, what's up?" And I go like, I like jump for it, you yeah. know. And it was a good one. So I yeah. love Brett a high says, five. says, "Let us perform the highest of fives. <laughs> 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 I do declare the highest of fives <laughs> on this National High Five Day. Well, enjoy everybody. Yeah, I didn't get you anything. But that's okay. Next time. Next time. Next time. Well, now I know it's a third Thursday in April every year. So cool. And that it's only 48 years old or whatever. 77. So 77 or was 1977. I don't, I don't math. So we're talking, uh, 47 years old. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. That's one year older than me. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> High five and fool. Oh, I should play that song from Local H. High five and Mother Effer. Oh yeah. You have to crank that today. That, that's two. the official song. Of High Five Day? Of High Five Day. You know that song, High Five I and don't. Mother Effer? Yeah, it's no, you don't. Oh, it's a, oh my it's gosh. a ripper, man. I will listen to oh. it later. That album? Oh, pull it up. Do we I play to, it? I used to go to Hastings Bookstore to <laughs> listen to that album on repeat instead of buying it for some reason. Local I H I I I know uh Low or no bound on the floor? What is it? Bound, 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 yeah. bound, bound, bound for the floor. floor. Yeah. And they have That's the hand on the Bible's a newer song, and it rips too, man. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, be oh down. my gosh, dude, this is a rocker, dude. Just even the intro, this gets me. I'm ready to high five everybody right now. Oh my gosh! And this is a two piece, right? Yeah, they're a two piece. It's crazy. On this National High Five Day. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> you high five and mother. I love it. You high five and mother. This is a ripper. High five and mother. Yeah, put this in the learn pod. I will. I just had this all part. Got it. Hoot. Grand prize. Monster truck. Okay, so that's okay. Right that's, on. That's oh, man, this song is so cool. That's one of those songs that as a right, as, to it. as somebody that plays in a nineties band, you wish more people knew. Because it just be would so, be so. You ever fun want to play, play that together? I'm your guy. We should, but the you know no one's gonna know it. But they could you could teach them. Yes. Yeah, that's not really what bands are for these days. You could teach them. <laughs> All they'll know is that's a that's a kick-ass song. They're gonna go, wow, what are these look at guys that. playing, man? This yeah, is a kick-ass song. I like it. All right, guys. He seems let's get angry. To work here. Crisis freak of the week. Yes. We have three brand new ads for you. Uh, one of these ads, based on your votes, moving on to the Freak of the Year playoffs, which we need to start thinking about timing out there, Moon. The playoffs? Yeah. We shall. Because it starts, uh, I August. think the way we've been, we've been doing it, August. August, yeah. So you guys will name the freaks. Uh, you'll be there in the chat room for us, naming the freaks. We'll name them, and then you'll vote on them. Learn will read them first. Let's get into it. Guys, pay attention. It's the Craigslist Freak of the Week, and ad number one. Sexy sumo wrestling, man for man, 30 years old, Brisbane. Since I was a little one, I always enjoyed watching old-time videos of classic sumo wrestlers. The diaper thong on a big man ass really turns me on. <laughs> I love how voluptuous the men are. They can suffocate a tiny twink like me and not even realize it. If you are a gay sumo wrestler or a big, fat, hairless man, let's have some fun. 
You can toss me around my living room, sit on my face, suffocate me just to the point of me passing out, flatten me out, I won't put up a fight, throw me around like you mean it. You'll be wearing the traditional sumo loincloth for the first part of our evening. Of course, at some point, you'll lose it. I will be naked at all times. If you want a safe word, I can tell you one, but I promise I won't use it. If you're, in, if you're not into sex with strangers, no problem. We can have lunch before we get to business. I also don't mind going into another room to Joe. I would just ask that you hang out until I'm done. That's just polite. Thanks, Jordan. Okay, so um, <laughs> if you're not into sex with strangers, we could have lunch first. And then get into it. Get into mm -hmm. it. All right, so this guy is uh, looking for some gay sumo wrestling. <laughs> Suffocate a tiny twink like me and not even realize it. Yeah. Wow. Diaper thong. Never thought of it that way. Uh, so it's a it's it is a like a it is a loin cloth. There's, I'm sure there's a um, I'm sure there's a technical sumo wrestling term for what that is. Yeah, let's see. Uh, a under, a under bridges. A mawashi? A mawashi is uh, the loincloth huh. that the rikishi, the sumo wrestlers, wear during training or in competition. The mawashi. Have you ever been to a sumo wrestling match? I have not. I've had one of those sumo inflatable suits on. No, them. I've actually been to... Uh, they had something at Helium, of all places. Helium <laughs> nightclub. <laughs> yeah. Like, they took out all the tables and chairs, uh -huh. and they put they had a sumo ring. Wow. And Seems like a small room for such an yeah. event. Yeah. Uh, no, the the floor is pretty big, like oh. the, the the floor where the tables and chairs normally are. And they had a sumo ring, and they had some champions there. Wow! And they put on an exhibition, and they asked if I wanted to get in and be thrown around. And you, I said yes. Of course yeah, you did. that's cool. As of hell. course I did. And like the hairless twink I am, <laughs> suffocated. Oh, wait, this ad is me. <laughs> Scott R. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Scott R. All right, let's uh, get some names. Okay, uh, let's see. Diaper Dan, Pat Sumo All. Pat Smotherall, Sumo 41, oh. uh, Slam Margera. The, this one doesn't really belong here with the sumo stuff, but the underwear taker is definitely one that we need to remember for the, the future. The underwear taker? Uh, Jason Sumoa, uh, Crocodile Undies. That's cute. <laughs> uh, Bulk Hogan. Did you see the... Scott Rasumo. Yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Scott Rasumo? Yes. I like Scott Rasumo. That one is I'll so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Z Z S U M O, Resumo. Resumo. <laughs> Resumo. Okay. Yeah, I like oh, that. Good I'll work, guys. Thank you, guys, for Thank you. thinking about me. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get into ad number two. Oh, going to Toronto for this one. Here we go. Coming at you. Man for a woman with car, Toronto. Real quick, looking for a woman to run me over with her car. Whoa. Nothing too extreme. Just need my leg run over. No questions asked. I've tried a couple car services, and it was a no-go. You'll have to bring your small car, no SUVs, to my office. I'll be in the parking lot. I'll trip, and then you will roll over my leg. No big deal. You'll be going 15 kilometers per hour tops. There are no cameras in the lot, so you won't be prosecuted when you drive off before I call an ambulance and the police. Hopefully my leg will break cleanly right away and not shatter. I know it's going to hurt and shock is a real possibility, <laughs> but this needs to be as real as possible. You will be rewarded if you do everything right and I'm satisfied with what just transpired. I will then be telling the authorities that a woman hit me, but I won't remember the color or model of your car. Can you swing by the office on Tuesday? <laughs> we'll talk more what? details in our next correspondence. <laughs> what the hell? This is the this is the uh, most unique and wild one I've There's no sex in this at all. It's just run me over with your car. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. And what is the reward? I'm hoping monetary. You can uh, sign his I mean, cast? this may be an insurance scam. A, a guy trying. That's to, what I was thinking. I was thinking a guy just trying to get out of something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he has a. Yeah, that's. Or it. or he wants to because he's he's woman specifically. Right. So or he wants to pin it on somebody. Whoa. Oh. Wow. Hmm. No questions asked. You know, just run over his leg. You know, this would, actually, though, this would complete two fetishes people may have. Like, you know, the intrusive thought of, like, running somebody over. You get to act that out with no problems. And bump yeah, over, I, don't, you know? I, don't, I almost don't see this as a fetish. This is a this is an insurance scam or he's trying to pin it on somebody. Yeah. Hmm. 
And to keep stereotypes alive. Women <laughs> running people over. That's right. All I know is a woman. I don't... <laughs> Shock is a real possibility. Uh, Shock is a real possibility. Wow, this would... Oh, my gosh. This this is a special... You got, you got special one? Life. I don't know. I've got 12. I mean... I mean Come on, hit they, me. They just keep coming on. Uh, well, <laughs> hit you. Okay, how about hit Romney? Uh, hit me... Uh, Hit, hit me, me Houston. Hit me Houston. <laughs> hit me Houston. Uh, let's see. Achy breaky leg. We got um, Flat Stanley. Fraudy Mercury. Hmm. Car Man San Diego. Jean Fraud Van Dam. <laughs> wow. Jean Fraud Van Dam is it. pretty good. Yeah. <sighs> Scam. Hit me Houston is also very yeah, good. Yeah, hit me Houston. Hit me Houston. I like it. Yeah. Which one? John That's... Fraud or Hit Me Houston? <laughs> hit Me Houston is kind of more fun to say. <laughs> that is so good. Hit Me Houston. <laughs> and they're on it today. Hit me or hit me? Yes. Hit I don't me. know. Dude, I, I, I spelled like, it H I T M E Y. Hit Me Houston. I, H I, yeah, hit me. H I T M E Y. Another good one that just came through uh, Scamella Anderson. Dude, all. Scamella Anderson. Scamella Anderson. <laughs> H I T dash M E? I yeah, just Hit have... Me Houston. Okay, yeah. dash. Wow. <laughs> that's a great name. Also, how do you know that that's what you want so badly? Like, if you really just want to get your leg run over, I mean, that's going to hurt like hell. It's going to hurt like hell. But I think Riz is onto something because he's probably like, it probably won't break my legs. It's going to hurt real bad. Right. And I'll be able to say that so-and-so did this, and I'm pretty sure it was her because she's been mad at me. Hit you me, know what? Houston, it or hit me? Like uh, hit, hit me, K N E E. Hit I put hit me. Hit knee because he's talking about a leg. Running over a leg, yeah. But it's hit but, it, but it's, and it's, but it's hit me. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Like it's hit me. Yeah, they both work. I'm just saying you know they what? both do work. This could be one of those fetishes both too, work. where you want to be taken care of. Like you know, some people they they want to go to the hospital and have all that experience and attention and attention. I feel like that's the underlying thing here. What Somebody the said, learn wheel well. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Iron Road hit me, Houston. Uh, down. All right, right, so that's a good that's one. That's a good one, too. Yep. All right. Uh, and finally, uh, ad number three, uh, learn coming at you. I want to fill you up. Man for anyone, 36, year, 36 years old, London, Ontario. Uh, I've been into enema play for a few years now, and I want to increase my limits. I love the way my stomach hurts when I am completely filled with any liquid. Oddly, not all pain is fun. I prefer not to use any carbonated beverages. I want you to join me in the fun. We will have a little game in place. There will be five different pails filled with random liquids from duty water to... Caca. Oh, my God. Hopefully, I will win and get just plain water, and hopefully, you will lose and get the pail that is filled with my duty water. Caca. I do play fair, so bring your own liquids, and we will add to that collection. Kool-Aid has been a popular one in the past. Please no vomit. The smell was too much for me. If we do end up having sex, I am a stickler for safety, so there will be plenty of condoms. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm a stickler for here. safety, get, yet I want to get out of here with this one. Have this uh, <laughs> bong of never. Do, what? No. First of all, d does it go up into your stomach? Yeah, it cleans out your colon. Yeah, but does it go all the way up into your stomach? I don't know the anatomy. I don't know. Isn't that enough? Isn't colon enough? <laughs> the colon is enough. Yes. Duty water up into your colon. That doesn't seem... I don't understand. Safe. So, what's the game? Like, whoever holds it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean... What's the game here? I think it's... The game is they'll just both get to put these random liquids oh. in themselves and have fun. <laughs> no. I mean... Come on, man. Have you ever done an enema or anything like that? Like a, a coffee one, or what? Did, what was Gwyneth doing a couple years ago? She was coffee enemas are supposed to be very good for you. Yeah, you go in and. Uh, the only no, I mean, just getting a colonoscopy. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to do an enema for that. You do a clean, you know, do, do a clean out. Right. I don't know. I don't. What, what are the health benefits of an enema? I don't know. I I know that. I guess if you're blocked up, it's okay. But they say not to do them too often. Yeah. Somebody said Coca Cola. Wow. That's great. All right, man. Moon. Philly, Philly Joel, uh, Philly Wonka, uh, enema of the state, Dr. Phil, F-I-L-L, -L, 
Uh, Colin Ryan. <sighs> There's a lot of different variations. Hey, vari hey, hey, back off. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of different variations. Phil Collins. There's a lot of different variations on Phil Collins. Filled Collins or Filled Collins. I think I like Filled Collins. Filled Collins. Filled <laughs> Collins. <laughs> And this one just, it, it just confuses me, this one. Yeah, I think you're right. By the way, health benefits of enemas improves your skin, your blood pressure, your mood, your mental performance. So. Dirty water, Harry. thing about carbon, like, he said he didn't like the carbon. Is that bad? That's bad, I guess. Dirty water, Harry. Howdy doody. Ugh. Okay. There you go. There are the uh, three ads for you. Voting now officially open, Moon. You could vote... Uh, up on our Twitter page or X page uh, at R I Z Z Show, you got ad number one, which is Scott Rasumo. Uh -huh. Scott Rasumo, man, he's uh, what did he call himself? Um, Sexy sumo wrestler. Well, he's looking for looking for one, a gay sumo wrestler or a big fat hairless man. He wants uh, wants you to have some fun, come over, sit on his face, and suffocate him just to the point of him passing out. Yep. Okay, then you got uh, Hit Me Houston. This is a guy who wants a gal with a car, no SUVs, to come to his office and run him over, break his legs, snap it, no big deal. Uh, he's going to tell the authorities that a woman hit him, but he doesn't remember the color or model of your car, so you're safe. Can you swing by the office on Tuesday? All right, you just heard uh, <laughs> from Phil Collins. <laughs> <All right. laughs> wow. All right, Lauren, you got to pick one. It's Phil Collins for me, through the roof. Okay. I, I know that one's going to, that is the freakiest of them, if we're taking it for what mm -hmm. is written on this paper. Um, I, I do want Hit Me Houston to move on, though. I, <laughs> I do love that ad. <laughs> I mean. I do love it. It's so unique. And it's not so even sexual. Terrible. It's so, not nothing sexual. Right. It is, it is, yes, it's freaky because this guy's gone to Craigslist to ask for what is definitely a crime. Right. <laughs> And it's what's not said that is leaving it open to interpretation. You know, what's the reward? Why are you doing this? I mean, I, I but I have to vote for <laughs> Phil Collins. I mean, <laughs> what is terrible. happening? What is happening? Kool-Aid has been popular in the past. <laughs> and what is the duty water about? Like, you're trying to get the toxins out of your body with an and enema? And then into somebody else's body? Yes. I guess what? So. Oh. Wow. What? No. Moon? I'm in the exact same boat you are. This is like a kind of a bizarre week, and I would love to see any of these guys go on. Uh, Scott but, Rasumo, too. I mean, this guy's a freak as well. Yeah, I mean, this there's uh, there's some. This is a wild week. This is a wild wild. Week. Um, I think number three wins hands down, H hands down. Phil Collins, I think, is taking this. So I'm not gonna go against the grain here. Um, but wow, man! What My heart wants Hit Me Houston to win. Honestly, <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Just so you can hear it again, because that that was a uh, we're reading uh, we're we've reading crimes. We've painted like four different <laughs> <laughs> different scenarios where this guy's trying to. I don't know. I don't. I still don't know what he wants. I don't know. I don't get it. Scott, man, yeah, uh, it's you're right. I want hit, hit me Houston, but um, there's just too much going on. So I'm gonna go with the third one there. And and also shout out to Scott Rasumo because good guy. Good. It just wants. <laughs> I just want you to flatten him. He says just wants flatten to flatten out. <laughs> right. Throw him around the apartment. He's going to be naked the entire time. <laughs> was, that the, cool was that the day. word that he used? Was flatten? Flat That's me out. That's a fun day right there. <laughs> All right. So it's Scott Rasumo. It's Hit Me Houston. It's Phil Collins. Vote via Twitter. We'll have the winner of when oh, we sign on tomorrow. I forgot about this one. Flatten me out. I'm not going to put up a fight. Um, if you want a safe word, I can tell you one, but I promise I won't use it. Yeah. <laughs> if you missed Learn and, and any of the ads, uh, go back to the podcast when it's posted and uh, re-listen and vote on our Twitter page at R-I-Z-Z Show. Probably the most important vote you'll make all year. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. All right, quick break. We'll come back. Uh, Learn's got crap on celebrities for us. It is 746 Thursday, traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more in the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. Uh, still troubles out on 70. Severe delays 70 eastbound between Veterans Memorial Parkway and Mid-Rivers Drive. Uh, also delays 270 eastbound between 44 
and Missouri AB exit 13, average speed 30 miles an hour. Your point forecast, some severe storms likely, high of 82 right now at 60 at the Point Studio. All right, welcome back to the program. Uh, comedian George Wallace will be here at 9 o'clock. I think maybe we'll do like a little giveaway today. Oh, you got, get that out of your, your, get that out of here. Oh. Moon's got the answers. Oh. You didn't look at those, did you? No. I okay. Just, uh, no, it was under the freak of the week. Get that out of here. Get it if out of If you're to be yeah. somebody's lifeline, I don't <laughs> want you, I don't want you looking at whether something's a have, gay bar or have steakhouse. You, have you ever suspected me of cheating in one of these <laughs> No, games? but I looked, I listen, I looked over, I saw the play sheet up and I go, uh-oh. Yeah, you're Well, right. you did improve yesterday. I got one. So, <laughs> I think... Uh, you that was yesterday was really porn star weatherman. Today is gay bar steakhouse. Okay. Okay. Which I feel I'm actually better. I'm, I'm better at this game than I am at the other one. All right. Today is April the 18th. Back in the day, 249 years ago in 1775, Paul Revere begins his famous ride from Charleston to Lexington, Massachusetts, warning the American colonists that what? What was he yelling? Uh, one if by. C, nope. two yeah. if by land, one if by um, land, two if by sea. The British are coming. But And I, I looked this up. It's all poo-poo. Because that's like not really what he was yelling. Oh. Yeah. He was, uh, it was gibberish. I think he was half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pee. <laughs> no, he was yelling, he was yelling, the regulars are coming. The regulars are coming. Oh, the no, regulars. The regulars show up. It's the worst. <laughs> I guess the regulars were British infantry soldiers. Oh, okay. So they, he wasn't yelling the British are coming. It's the regulars. Uh, 118 years ago, 1906, the great San Francisco earthquake struck at 5.13 a.m. Uh, it was estimated between 7.9 to 8.3 on the Richter scale. It was followed by raging fires that took weeks to fully contain. 700 people died. 20, uh, 250,000 left homeless. Crazy. 101 years ago, 1923, the first game was played at Yankee Stadium. Yankees beat the Boston Red Sox 4-1. to Babe Ruth hit the stadium's first home run, and two men were arrested for scalping. Uh, one tried to sell his $1.10 ticket for $1.25, and the other wanted $1.50. Hmm. Oh, I thought you meant they were grabbing hair. No. Uh, 69 years ago, 1955, super genius Albert Einstein dies in Princeton, New Jersey. He was... Old. 76. 76. 56 years ago, 1968, London Bridge was sold to an American named Robert McCullough for about $2.5 million. It was later disassembled and rebuilt in Arizona. Lake Havasu. Hmm. Yep, Lake Havasu, Arizona, where nearly naked college kids enjoyed for spring break. Uh, 41 years ago, 1983, the Disney Channel begins broadcasting. 29 years ago, 1995, Joe Montana. Joe Montana retires officially from professional football. 18 years ago, 2006, Katie Holmes gives birth to Surrey Cruz. And 12 years ago today in 2012, Dick Clark dies of a massive heart attack after having some kind of outpatient medical procedure the night before. He was in bad shape already. Remember he had, had a stroke? Yeah, what was, the, what was the procedure supposed to be? I don't know what it was. It was an outpatient thing. But he had had a, he had a, had strokes earlier. Remember, he tried to do New Year's and he couldn't talk. Mm. Oh yeah. But he passed away on this day in 2012. He was 82. And remember, Dick Clark was like young looking until all of a sudden he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a Tuesday to a Wednesday. I think it was. I was like, oh man, Dick Clark just yeah, got yeah. to be 80. He just he was just young yesterday. What would they call him? America's Youngest, Sweetheart. No, it's like America's, America's favorite dick. teenager or something like that. It was <laughs> not America's dad. That was Bill Cosby. That was, oh, no, yes. no, excuse me. I'm she, getting my she didn't say people. dad. <laughs> What'd you say? I said America's dick. Dick Clark. Oh, oh that's nice. He was America's no, dick that's, for a long that's time. That's Florida. <laughs> that's right. He was America's dick <laughs> for a long time. That's a peninsula. He was that's the official dick of America. That's Florida. <laughs> All right, that's what happened back in the day. Yeah, I just assumed... Well, coming out of your mouth. All right. We're yeah. gonna... <laughs> I'm talking about Dick Clark. What are you talking about right now? I thought you said dad. and Well, you say Bill known. Cosby actually plays into that, too. All right. Time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And we start with a congratulations to St. Louis's own Nelly 
and Ashanti, who are officially now engaged and having a baby. How about that? Saw this news a yesterday. A baby with his auntie? It's, uh, with Ashanti. <laughs> it's oh. a national high-five day miracle. It is. Ashanti <laughs> says... This new year of my life is such a blessing, full of love, hope, and anticipation. Motherhood is something that I've looked forward to, and sharing this family, fiance, and loyal fans who have been supportive of my career is an amazing experience. She's such a sweetie, so good on Nelly. Well, they worked together for a long time, then they were not. I guess so, on and off. That's awesome. On and off Does he have kids with other, another lady? I feel yeah, like he had a reality show. Yeah. He did? He oh, did. yeah. He had a reality show. Uh, Nellyville. Welcome to Nellyville. Was that what it's called? Yeah. And he was on Real House. Oh, was he? One of those shows. Well, she's super cute. I've always loved Ashanti, so congratulations to Nelly. He's it's- got uh, Chanel Haynes and Cornell Haynes the third. Okay. And then also has Sean and Sydney Thomas, siblings he adopted after his sister Jackie passed wow. in uh, of leukemia in 2005. Ah. What a good dude. Guys, it seems like everybody knew that Josh Freeze was going to be drumming for the Foo Fighters after the passing of Taylor Hawkins, except for Josh Freeze. He was recently interviewed, chatted about the call he received from Dave Grohl and how he was really cognizant of honoring Taylor Hawkins by giving space to the band. Here's a little snippet of Josh Freeze explaining about getting that call. And she's like, I know why he's calling you. I was like, <laughs> even your wife. Easy. I'm not, I'm not thinking that. I'm, I swear yeah. to God, that's not why. That, I go, you know what? He's, he might be having a New Year's Eve party. I called him back and we small talked and uh, we had the drummer talk and we want you to be the guy. It felt like someone kind of like socked me in the stomach. I didn't go, wow, yippee, this is so cool. I didn't get excited like that. It was more, it was almost like I had the, like the wind knocked out of me. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. And by the way, he's on a video podcast uh, with a guy named Rick Beato, mm-hmm. who, if, you, if you're a musician and you like music and you like kind of in-depth check stuff, that out. check it out. He, he's got some great interviews. Uh, he recently did one with Danny Carey from Tool. Oh, really? Um, he just did one with, uh, oh, Michael McDonald. Oh, really? His Michael McDonald episode <laughs> wow. is great. Huh, he does some cool. good, pretty in-depth, deep dives with different songs and... And different musicians. Uh, Rick Beato. B-E-A-T-O. Speaking of a Rick and uh, Michael McDonald, yesterday, or a couple days ago at the uh, Can You Feel the Punk Tonight rehearsal, Chris, our guitar player, and Tim Convey were talking about an old Rick Moranis yes. video that surfaced recently from his Second, uh, second and City. In fact, they must have seen the same video I saw because Rick Beato was talking to Michael McDonald about that. Oh, okay, it's Rick Moranis acting as if he is Michael McDonald in the studio. And it's like he's <laughs> in his car and like the band's already recording it and, and Michael McDonald just walks in right when he's supposed to sing his little parts. And, yeah. and it's, it's Rick whatever Moranis song, doing It's whatever it. song that he does with Christopher Cross. Yeah. Whatever song is with Christopher Cross. Apparently it's it's worth sharing, so let's share it on our socials. But Rick Moranis is seventy one today. That's why I was like, Oh, oh. my gosh, what a what a so synchronicity. Michael McDonald in the interview says he was high as hell. <laughs> Who was? Michael McDonald was. He was high as hell when that came on SCTV. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. That Go, continue awesome. on. Okay, cool. Uh, Metallica's James Hetfield took to Instagram to show off a new tattoo that he got in honor of the late Lemmy Kilmister of Motorhead. It actually contains what Hetfield calls a pinch of his cremation ashes that were so graciously given to me. Uh, the tattoo is on James Hetfield's me- middle finger on his right hand. It's an ace of spades inside of an iron cross, both images associated with Lemmy. And uh, James Hetfield writes, without Lemmy, there would be no Metallica. All right, this is from that podcast. Here is Michael McDonald talking about that. You've seen the skit of, who is it, Rick Moranis, I Rick think? Rick Moranis, yeah. Uh, plays you. First time I saw that on television, I had just left Pat <laughs> Simmons' room. But he goes, man, I got this pot. You're not going to believe. We only take a couple hits. This stuff will land based you. I made it to my room. I somehow got the key in the door. And this thing is in, in progress on television. I remember thinking, that guy really looks familiar. And it was Rick Moranis dressed as me. And I thought, I'm losing it. I'm, I'm having a hallucination. So <laughs> as it played out, I realized this is a SCTV and it's a skit. I think Rick Moranis actually apologized to me. Years later, I said, no, no. I said, I've gotten more mileage out of that. Oh, thing. my God. It was so hilarious. That's it's, wild. How it's cool a, is that? It's amazing. It's, it's Rick Moranis in the car rushing to the studio, and he runs in. Just runs, to sing that one part. <laughs> and then he puts the headphones down. It's, 
And I love that Michael McDonald was high as hell. When high as song. hell. That's so good. Santos is on. Pearl Jam oh, wow. have put out a third song ahead of this Friday's release of their 12th upcoming album, Dark Matter. Wreckage follows the previous release of a title track and running. So here's a little bit from that new song, Wreckage. So I was looking at producer Andrew Watt, who's doing this record. He, he worked with Eddie Vedder on some solo stuff. He's worked with everybody from Ozzy to Cardi B, to Post Malone. I think Andrew Watt is like the new Rick Rubin of our time. The kid's 33 years old. And he's, he's worked with everybody. And he's, and he's been doing this for 10 plus years with everybody. What killing do you think? it. Yeah, killing it. So he's I, only 33. He's only 33. That's not fair. It's not jerk. fair. I love him. It's not fair. Uh, I love the movie Willow. That's why my cat is named Willow. And I love Warwick Davis so much. Um, and just sympathies go out to him. He's mourning the death of his wife, who... I was looking at his family. He, he did this beautiful post about talking about how she was just one of the most... You know, down to earth, always laughed at his jokes. He says he misses her hugs. They have two kids together. And I just love him so much. So that's uh, so sad. Warwick Davis's wife passed away. Um, for years, Quentin Tarantino has been touting the movie critic as his 10th and final film. But now Deadline is reporting that the director has dropped the project. Sources say he simply changed his mind and is going back to the drawing board to figure out what his final movie will actually be. Uh, that movie was reportedly going to star Brad Pitt, marking his third Tarantino movie after Inglorious Bastards and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And back in May, uh, Tarantino said the movie critic was set that in California in 1977, based on a guy who really lived but was never really famous and used to write movie reviews for a porno rag. Mm. So we'll have to wait to see what that final movie from Tarantino is going to be. Um, did you guys see the Bond movie trailer yesterday starring Henry Cavill? I heard about it. Well, it was completely fake. Completely generated by artificial intelligence. Racked up millions of views on YouTube. I watched it. Margot Robbie's in it. <laughs> it. It's pretty wild. You can tell when you go into it knowing it's fake, you see that it's fake. But if you just would have watched that yesterday, you would have not been able to tell that that wow. wasn't the upcoming Bond movie. Crazy. I, I got to watch this thing. Is this a little piece of it? Yeah. We are not like the others. The problem is that the world is too small for both of us. So this is completely AI. Complete AI. Hello, James Bond. I just want to remind you. That I never miss. Whoa. And if you watch it, Fake. I mean, it's, it's just cut. It's one cut after the other, but it looks very good. It looks like a Bond movie that you will want to see. <laughs> However, people, this is just such a, a testament of how we are living in society now. Everybody watches this trailer. Nobody read the, the notes on it because if they would have, they would have seen that it said, please note that this video is a concept trailer created solely for artistic and entertainment purposes by the uh, KHS studio notes. Mm. By the uh, agent for Henry Cavill. Yeah. Sure. They're like, this <laughs> yeah. is what it could be. Um, anyway, that was kind of cool. Um, a producer named Carol Baum, who worked on Buffy the Vampire Slayer movies and Father of the Bride back in the 90s, is uh, saying that Sydney Sweeney shouldn't have a career. Says she's not pretty, she's not talented. Sydney Sweeney's rep went off on Carol, saying how sad that a woman in this position to share her expertise and experience chooses instead to attack another woman to unjustly disparage a fellow female producer. Speaks volumes about Mrs. Baum's character. This one was a teacher. She was teaching a film class. And obviously, young people right now love Sid. Everybody loves Sydney Sweeney. She's in all sorts of I stuff. can't tell you about her acting prowess. I know she's a hot chick. She's good. I don't know who you're talking about. Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria, blonde. She's got, she's got her boobs. boobs out. Her boobs are huge, but she is a great actor. Like Euphoria, she's excellent. Um, I can't tell you about that. I know how she looks, and I know she's like the new it girl. Anyway, okay. I think it sucks. So this teacher obviously is trying to teach a class and then decides to take the one actress that everybody in the class is raving about and just crap all over it. Wow. I don't know if it's a good look for her. Leonardo DiCaprio. This is awesome. Leonardo DiCaprio is attached to play Frank Sinatra in an upcoming biopic. Yeah, you I was trying to think. see that. Scorsese, it's a Scorsese movie. Yes, so Scorsese it is. wants to do a biopic on Sinatra yeah. and has picked DiCaprio to play Sinatra. I think it's no perfect. Way. Is there any other person? He picked that? Leo? <laughs> no but I was way. Trying to think, yeah, I was trying to think who else would... would... I think Jesse Plemons would be awesome. Jesse Plemons as Sinatra as Frank. Yeah. I can't see it. I say Ronan Farrow. Like <laughs> Play Ronan your Farrow, father. Yes. Play your father. 
Um, Jennifer Lawrence yeah. is going to star as his second wife, Ava Gardner. I think that's a great cast. Uh, I'm I look trying to forward think to who this. would be a better Sinatra. But I mean, I think Leo is going to be great at this. I think he looks like Sinatra. Yeah. yeah. He, has he, that he does need thing. to. Leo's face is a little bit more round than Frank Sinatra's face, but whatever. You know, hopefully they can just yeah, put makeup work. on him. I think it'll work. It'll work. Uh, I liked the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Did you guys ever see that? No, I, I hear it's it. great, though. It's a really great rom-com. It's being turned into a stage musical uh, with John M. Chu, to set to direct. Variety's reporting that this would mark the Great White Way debut for Chu, which directed the film version of Crazy Rich Asians and The Heights as an upcoming two-part film adaptation of Wicked. If, you've, if you like rom-coms and you've never seen Crazy Rich Asians, it's pretty good. Um, Time Magazine released its complete Time 100 list, which is a collection of the most influential people of the year. Can you guess any people that are on the list? Taylor Swift. She's uh, she's in the artist, but yeah. Who uh, else? I mean, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's on there. Uh, people like Dua Lupa, Dev Patel, 21 Savage, Elliot Page, Kylie McNogue. Michael J. Fox. Yeah. It's all the people that you would think. Innovators, though. Maya Rudolph, Tori Burch, pioneer this year, America Ferreira. Tori Burch. The the, clo- the clothing. The That's what I thought. Tori Burch. And, mm-hmm. Holy smokes. I don't know that I haven't is. heard that name in a long time. Uh, the only reason I even know that name is from that uh, um, How I Built This podcast with Guy Raz. They, oh. she, mm-hmm. he, he interviewed her about the start of the company and everything. Mm-hmm. Tori Burch, right? Tori Burch. She wow. designed the Stanley Cup. She did, and she should be well known for that reason alone. Anyway, that's your crap on celebrities. Celebrity celebrating a birthday today: Chloe Bennett. That's uh, D- Sky Daisy on Agents of Shield is 32. America Ferrara is 40. Reeve Carney. That's Riff Raff in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, and the or the remake. And the immortal Dorian Gray on Penny Dreadful is uh, 41. Miguel Cabrera. Detroit Tigers MVP is 41. Courtney Kardashian is 45. Uh, Melissa Joan Hart is 48. Eli Roth is 52. Conan O'Brien is 61. Eric hey. McCormick, Will Truman from Will and Grace is 61. Jeff Dunham, comedian, 62. Jane Leaves is a sentence. Oh, Daphne from uh, Frasier. That's right. And Joy in Hot in Cleveland is 63. Eric Roberts, Julia's way more talented brother. Agreed. Uh, is 68. Uh, Rick Moranis. Ghostbusters, Legends, Spaceballs, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Little Shop of Horrors, Parenthood, The Flintstones, and Michael McDonald is 71. Remember somebody just randomly punched him in the in the face? Oh, yeah, recently, year, uh, right? Last year in New York City, he was yeah. walking down the street, and somebody just punched him in the face. Do we ever so hear weird. more about that? That just kind I think of they caught went away. Okay. Well, I think Rick Moranis turned around and killed him. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, big, strong, burly Rick Moranis. How, he shrunk, how tall is he Rick shrunk Moranis? that guy. <laughs> how tall? He got and shrunk him. Let's see. How, take a guess. I'm going to take a guess. He's five foot six. Well, he's 71. Five he's smaller six. than he started. How, how tall do you think he is? I'm going to say five five. Yeah, I think he has three to four inches on moon, so I'm going to go about five four. Five foot six. All right. Five four is. All right. I think he started it. He's, he's 71. He's, he's, he's five four. Tops. <laughs> he's Tops now he's he's <laughs> Sigourney <laughs> Weaver is six feet tall. Wow. Wow. Haley go. Mills is 78. That's a classic Disney star who played the twins Susan and Sharon in the original 1961 version of The Parent Trap. All right. Today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is simply Temptress. Temptress. Uh, yes. One name, Temptress. What a name. And today's birthday with. goal has been in 277 fine films, including The 50 State Masturbate, hmm. <laughs> uh, Ally McPheel, Big Boob Lesbian Party 1, Cries of Passion. Extreme Lesbian Vacation. I Know Who You Did Last Summer, Liquid Gold 2, mm-hmm. Nasty Oil Wrestling, Prescription for Pleasure, Sweet Honey Buns 4, Wild Wild Chest, The Womb Raider, and Who Can Forget a Roll in 1999's Psycho Biker Sluts from Hell. Wow. Temptress is 47 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those were crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll give away some stuff. Simple game of gay bar or steakhouse. So, Learn will read you the name of a business. You will tell us if the establishment is a gay bar or a steakhouse. Cool. Two out of three right. You win your choice of prizes. We've got tickets to go see Blue October, Switchfoot, Matt Nathanson. St. Louis Music Park, August 16th. we got tickets to go see The Struts with special guest Barnes Courtney. Saturday night, July 27th, over the factory. We got tickets to go see comedian Nikki Glazer. 
Fabulous Fox Theater next Saturday, the 27th. And we got tickets for Grateful Dead Night at the Cardinals game tomorrow. Cardinals and Brewers. If you want to play, 314 624 3833, 618 398 3833, you get one Moon Lifeline. And Moon, killing this game. <laughs> Loves it, <laughs> studies it, has probably been to all these establishments. Yeah, he I've has, got, I've got he a has map. done the research. Yes. I've got a map on the wall, uh, little pins in all of them. So, gay bar or steakhouse next. All right, it's 817. It is Thursday. Traffic and weather, Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more in the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. A delay is 70 eastbound between Bryan and Mid Rivers Mall Drive. That is still, uh, it's getting a little bit better, but still happening. Uh, there's also delays 270 eastbound between 44 and Big Bend. Your point forecast, some severe storms, likely high of 82 right now at 62 at the Point Studio. Uh, but I Walking the dogs last night. It was nice out last night, too. It was like good good walking weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we need we need a new leash for, for Cat the Dog. And we saw one of the neighbors and just, you know, talking, need a new leash. And, you know, he goes, well, go to Timu. And you get like a leash for four bucks. Have you have you used Timu before? No, but I've heard of it. I have. Is it's basically the, the new wish. So you order things on there, and if you have a leash that says six foot, prepare for it to be like right. a little piece no. of yarn that's about <laughs> no, two looked, inches long. And uh, but it's a really good deal. I, it, I looked it up, and so I was like, so heavy duty leash four bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but and he's like, well, don't you know? Don't it, it just comes when it comes. It's right. coming from yeah. China. It's yeah. coming from China, but yeah, but you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. So it's a four dollar leash. Uh huh. There are no warranties, no guarantees, nothing. Yo, here's a three dollar, a two dollar ninety eight cent one. Uh, it says strong pet dog leash. Dude, yeah, I've I've never gotten any. I've I've never gotten anything. What's cool about Timu though? Did you spin the wheel? Because I mean, I'm incredible at winning what every wheel? time with that wheel. I've never lost yet. What wheel? No they have wheel. a wheel that gives you like 100% off if you buy these 12 things. and then you 100% off. I love that yeah. deal. Hey, here's a pink rope leash. Reflective. $1.38. <sighs> no. Or I could go and get like a good one. Yeah. Well, there's... And get exactly what you want. Which kind of... Exactly you looking what I want. For? I can give you some recommendations. Which ones are you looking for? I don't know. One that doesn't give my wife like rope burn. Okay. Look at this one, man. Kind yeah, of cool. she doesn't want like one of those rope ones. Do you like the one that the dog can just kind of run? Or what do you call those? The expandable ones? No, I don't want one of those. I know I got to figure it out. But I was looking at that Timu thing. I'm like, oh, I was I was thinking about pulling the trigger on this thing. Four bucks. Uh huh. Four bucks. Ah. Or I could just get one where I get one where I feel okay about walking the dog with it. And it's not just going to snap and the dog's going to run into traffic. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, like a. You can fake reviews and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Scott just said what he said about it not being what you ordered. Here's the third review on this leash. Five stars. Just what we ordered. 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 It's really useful. It's really useful. Great quality. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah, that seems like a fake ad. Like a <laughs> fake review. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I trust that. Especially but when it comes to my dog. That's my dog. Right. <laughs> The dog doesn't care. Listen, anytime you order something from one of these sites or overseas, you're really, you run the risk of not getting what yeah, you... Yeah, you're rolling the dice. Not really getting what you want. Safety issues, case, case in point. Headline, California woman dies from lead poisoning after using imported hemorrhoid ointment. Whoa. Uh. Imported hemorrhoid ointment. California health authorities reported a tragic incident where a woman died after using a Vietnamese hemorrhoid ointment containing dangerous levels of lead. Dang. The California Department of Public Health, in conjunction with the Orange County Health Care Agency, disclosed that the woman su uh, suffered severe lead poisoning. The ointment identified as, and it's a, I mean, just, dude, look at the name. Cowboy Turkey Tao. Yeah, I, I got the translation. I have no, what's the what's the translation for that? Uh, it's translated to castor oil hemorrhoid extract. 
Oh, so it was like just the extract. Like it was more, it was, you're supposed to mix it with something? I've, I have no, I have no idea. I don't know if this is a Vietnamese woman or she ordered it off a weird site or somebody was like, hey, try this. This, you got the roids? This will work. Don't get any bee hole products from Timu, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only get bee hole products that you trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a trusted name. <laughs> A letter in the university. <laughs> Due to the risk of lead poison in the OC Healthcare Agency, urges users of this Vietnamese hemorrhoid ointment called castor oil hemorrhoid extract to immediately stop mm -hmm. using the ointment and get their blood tested for lead. So this this ointment contained four. This was four percent lead, which health officials are like highly dangerous. The victim, a woman from Sacramento. Got the ointment through a Facebook purchase with a, I guess somebody in Vietnam sent it to her. Did it clear the hemorrhoid up? I guess so. So it worked. Health agency uh, health agencies have advised people, anybody with this, seal it in a plastic bag and contact them immediately. Let's see here. So if you have that much lead, lead poisoning can range anywhere from mild to severe. You get tired. You get irritable. Okay, I got the first two things. Uh oh. <laughs> Difficulty concentrating, okay. Oh, God. Uh, they lose me at the stomach cramps. And in extreme cases, seizures, coma, and death. Exposure to any amount of lead is considered harmful. Yikes. Big Whoa. yikes. Hey, they're now offering a recall, though. If you are going to put anything up your butt, just, you know, buy or beware. Trusted sources only, as you said. Yep, trusted sources only. Is somebody at the door? I think keep... George is here. Is, is George Wallace here? Man, um, let me see here. He's a day early and a half hour early. Man, this guy is awesome. Supposed to be here at nine. Hey, if he's here, bring him in. If he wants. Oh, we'll play Gay Bar Steakhouse and. Unless we play Gay Bar Steakhouse with George with Wallace. With George. Hey, why That's not? to him. We could do it. Is he here? Is that him? Uh, We're lots of hugs, lots of. Is it hugs and kisses? It's, yeah, it's him. Oh, it's, it's all right. Let's bring him right hugging. in. All right. Let's just play the game with him. All right. Hi, George. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, comedy legend Howdy. George Wallace. Hey, we are on the air. So, <laughs> come take a seat. Oh, oh, we're on the air. We're on the air now. Oh my God, let me sit down and I said, I'm so fat. I bet I break this chair. <laughs> oh, I did make sure he does not fall. They come over to assist me. I'm not gonna fall. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, so George so Wallace. George Wallace is in the house. I feel good already. We're gonna have some fun today. How about well, that? Well, you know what? We were about to play a game, kind of waiting for you to come in. So maybe you could just play it with us. Oh, I'm not good at games, but I will play the game and I might win. Okay, the game is called Gay Bar or Steakhouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm from New York City, so I've been to both of them, okay? <laughs> Gay bar or steakhouse. So let's uh, let's do, let me see, one, two, Show you how three, smart I am. Number one, five, gay six, bar. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, 10, 11, uh, 12. I, I like, go we'll, ahead. We'll give you 12 business establishments. Okay. All right, Learn's, that's Learn over there. She's going to read you the Hi, name of a business. Nice okay. You. And you okay. tell us, Mr. George Wallace, if the establishment Dr. is- Dr. George it, Wallace. Dr. George Dr. Wallace. George Wallace. <laughs> Who is at Helium Comedy Club tomorrow and on Saturday? Yeah. See how I got the plug in there? Yeah. You have to tell us if the establishment is a gay bar or steakhouse out of 12. And Scott, get the listeners on the phone there. Uh, out of 12, how many will George get correct? Okay. okay. I'm ready. Ready to go. Here we go. And Moon over here. That's Moon. Moon. Hey, we, how are you? I'm doing if well. You, how are you? You're in the corner. Something wrong with you? Yeah, yes. I've, I've been in timeout for a decade. <laughs> if a, you need a lifeline, uh -huh. Moon is your guy. Fantastic. We got Moon, we're going to do this, okay? Also a professional. Also a professional. At, uh... Okay. All right. Gay bar or steakhouse with George Wallace. Here we go. Dr. George Wallace, <laughs> your, <laughs> your first establishment. Let's Dr. Go. George Wallace. Clear Sky Lodge in Clear, Alaska. Is that a gay bar or yeah, steakhouse? It's a gay bar. Oh, boy. That steakhouse off to a terrible start. <laughs> Down by one. It's off okay. to a terrible start, Dr. George Wallace. Okay. All right, Dr. George Wallace. The Royce Wood in Pasadena, California. The Royce Wood. The Royce Wood. Wood. <laughs> oh, no. Wood. Gay boy. Steakhouse. Hey, hey, Grizz, you're doing, you just hit him wrong. You just hit him wrong. For, for no. Over two, Dr. George Wallace. Here we go. Doctor, the Bull House in New York City, New York. Oof. The Bull House. The Bull House. <laughs> you wanted to say uh, line line. No, you don't, because bull means beef, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's gay bar. No. Oh, 
Chris, 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 you're sitting me up. I know after the show, he's going to tell me Georgia had them all right. <laughs> Lauren, go ahead. Okay, here we go. I'm not doing so good here today, am I? Doing terrible. <laughs> I think things are looking up. Doctor, the Belmont in Charleston, South Carolina. The Belmont. The Belmont. Well, that's got to be a gay bar. Gay bar! Gay bar! On the floor. Floor. You're going to win the rest of uh, that that was your fourth, so so one for eight. four. Yeah, here we go. Eight more. We, can no, we have twelve. Around. We have twelve. We can do it. All right, Dr. George Wallace, Hayloft Saloon in Detroit, Michigan. That's gay bar. That is a gay bar. All right. So far, everything's been a gay bar for you, by the way. <laughs> Good strategy. He's playing the odds. No, you keep there saying is, gay bar. And, I, and I, strange thing is, I've been in all these places. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lost Loon, yes, in Detroit, Michigan, a gay bar. Here we go. Number six, CeCe's City Broiler. Oh, come on. CeCe's? You got to be kidding. City Broiler? Yeah. That's a steakhouse. A in Columbia, Missouri? So are you giving me another chance? I'm just saying. I'm just telling you. She never said the city. CC's City Broiler in Columbia, Missouri. Go with your gut. Yeah. Steakhouse. <laughs> Steakhouse. Steakhouse. All right. Nice. He's trying Steakhouse. to fool you. All right, dude. You're killing it now. Here He's we go. To Regis Philbin, Philbin, Let's go for is this your final answer. Dr. George Wallace, the Santa Fe Cattle Company in Nashville, Tennessee. Is that a steakhouse or gay bar? Cattle Company. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is all about meat, isn't it? It the is. whole thing is about meat. <laughs> That's what this whole show's about. This or that. <laughs> let's go with, uh, let's make it a steakhouse. Make it a oh, steakhouse. Nice. You are on a roll. That's four in a row. I went to DeVry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they give you your own toolbox, right? <laughs> a semester in meat handling. All right. Oh. I'm and my sorry. daddy was a butcher. I should know all of you these things. You should. Shows. Yeah. You do. You're on a roll. Dr. George Wallace, Hanover Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Is that a steakhouse or gay bar? Hanover Street, that's a gay bar. That is a steakhouse. Uh, right. You want to roll go. there. You got uh, one, two, three, four more left. Okay. Wang Chung's in Honolulu, Hawaii. Is that a gay bar or steakhouse? Wang, Wang Chung, Chung's. Honolulu, Hawaii. Very Asian. Wang Chung's. That's a, that's a steakhouse. <laughs> That's a gay bar. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. That's a gay bar. I'm trying to avert my eyes. <laughs> Wayne Chung's in Honolulu. You know, you've been to Honolulu. Go ahead. I, we may, we may be I've Chung's. never been to Honolulu. Uh, it's got mostly of Asians there. Yes. You know, the second largest city, Hawaiian city, is Las Vegas. Because the Hawaiians could not afford Honolulu, so they had to move to Las Vegas. Mm. So the oh. second largest Hawaiian city is Las Vegas. Go ahead, gay bar. True story? <laughs> <laughs> of course it's true. You look it up. Oh, I will. Where, man. Oh, I will. The Corner Pocket That's in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, it was very fast, George. Hey, hey, Rizzo, anything on the corner? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was at that corner yesterday. I know that. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're sitting at five. Yes. Sitting at five. We have two left. Here we go. The Raven in Anchorage, Alaska. Gay bar or steakhouse? Gay bar. Boom. All right, okay. this is it, George. Hey. This is the final we gotta get some. We've got to get some drama going some here. Drums. Got to get Ladies some drama here. The final answer is. All right, so we got. Uh, so you have how many? Five. Let's see. Let's see. One, Let's two, put that on six. One, you? two, three, four, five, six. He's got six. Oh, you got six. Oh, All right. Nice. Somebody on the phone guessed. Uh, okay, Grant says six. We have two people at seven. Oh my gosh. Seven. So I got seven right. Two people are right. So we'll here see. We go. With this the is last it. one. This, this could is be it. the seventh okay. one. Okay. Ready? Uh huh. Wolf's in Copper City, Florida. Is it a gay bar or steakhouse? Wolf's. Wolf's in Copper City. Ding, 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 gay bar. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, no, face. I Wolf has nothing to do with me. Steakhouse. You can't eat the wolf. Oh, Steakhouse. Uh, well, I did a pretty good idea, 50-50, right? 50-50, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. So, hey. And that's all right. So Ended good. on a rough note, but let me bring you back up here by reading this. According to the American Community Survey, around 310,000 native Hawaiians still live on the Hawaiian Islands. Compared to 370,000 living in the continental United States, Las Vegas has the second largest metro population of Native yeah. Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders at 40,000 people, second only to Honolulu. He was right. Wow. Well, cool. well, you I ran, you ran for mayor. You did the research. Moon, you yeah. are really, you, you're the eclipse. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you ran for mayor. 
of, of No, Vegas. I just made that up. I wanted to run for mayor of, of Las Vegas because they do so much stupid stuff there. You been to Las Vegas? Yes. Like they got the tram on the back side of the street. Shut them Las Vegas Boulevard down. Put the tram right down the middle of the street like they're doing Zurich Switzerland on the bottom of Strasse. Just have a beautiful tram and people can take it from the airport and yeah. get off, you know? So I like to do things like that. I get rid of some of this cones. I, 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 can run for, I can run for president, actually. You should. You know, uh, if I do run for president, it's going to affect St. Louis. When I run for president, first law I'm going to pass, Chick-fil-A going to be open on Sunday. I don't give a <laughs> <laughs> yes. The problem is people That's, would vote for me uh, for me yeah. I'm thinking about, right? Yeah, when you actually say stuff that people care about. Yes. Right, right. Exactly. What people care about. What yes. people care about. So you, you didn't you didn't officially run for mayor. You wanted to. You talked about it. I just it. talked about it. I should run for mayor. And they should. voted up as that. I, that's how people love what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. People that are texting and walking, not knowing where they're going, texting and walking. I think you should be able to. And you got your green light for the car. Knock the hell out of them. Yeah. I like just that. let him get yeah, well, You just, played a mayor in Little Nicky. I played a mayor in Little Nicky. So you already have the experience. You played yeah. a mayor in Batman. In ba That's oh. right. Batman Forever. Somebody did their research. So now I'm always uh, uh, Hubie Halloween. I played uh, mm -hmm. the mayor also. You are Mr. Mayor. I'm the mayor. You are Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Mayor. Okay, so day. Batman Forever. Mm -hmm. Batman Forever. That was the which Batman? Uh, the, the, uh, what are you looking at me what for? What Batman? What? Who oh, played him? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Val Kilmer. That was Val Kilmer. Yeah, Kilmer. And I just worked <laughs> with Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, we did a movie last year called uh, uh, Just Getting Started with Morgan Freeman. Oh. oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't mayor in that, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> but You're you America's it. mayor. You I mean, you about are. That? I would make a great politician. Dude, Batman really Forever was Kiss from a Rose, right? Yeah, Seal. From Seal? Of course it was. Oh, you know yeah, everything, a, don't you? You have to be smart soundtrack. when you do morning radio. No, you don't. He yeah, is you do. very smart. I did radio for so many years, and I was smarter back then because you have to do so much research. Yeah. Yeah, so people Especially do. morning radio. And comedians have to be, especially morning. Morning radio is the best, man. You, you're part of people's lives. They wake up in the morning. You make them happy no matter what they're going yeah. through. You're driving and laughing. You can't beat that. And well, you that's got George the, Wallace on your show. Oh, uh, that's uh, uh, Doctor <laughs> George. Now everybody's oh, doubly, <laughs> doubly happy. Uh, yeah, that's what morning radio is all about. You know, you're on your way to a job that eh, that you and don't care for, about. You know, for your how many, how long you're in the car, twenty minutes. Yeah. And I tell people, make things. sure you enjoy your life. Look at us; we're doing what we love to do. If you don't like what you're doing in that car this morning, right now, turn the car, turn turn around, go home. Yeah. Drive off a bridge. You for no, don't, no, don't, don't, don't do that. No, don't, don't do that. No. Come on, no. Rizzo, don't drive off a bridge. No, no, no don't, don't tell do that. you about that. <laughs> Did you know you could get hurt driving off a bridge? Yes. <laughs> yes. People always say to me, have a safe trip. I said, I'm glad you reminded me. I was going to drive off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I, could, if I could help your day for however long you're in the car, we mission accomplished. Am I yeah. right, guys? Yeah, we're the yeah. escape. That's what common is about. When people come over to uh, the, the Helium Coming to Club, yeah. we're about healing. Laughter is healing for the soul. So that's why I'm in St. Louis. Yeah. And if you can't laugh in St. Louis, you can't laugh anywhere. As soon as you get off the airplane here, you can start laughing. You see the sign said that it is the Lambert International Airport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only thing international in St. Louis is the House of Pancakes. Let's get that straight right <laughs> Yeah, Lambert sucks. But so Love you I just have. keep laughing in your life, no matter what. Making people happy. This guy hates the airport. I hate this airport so much, man. You think this airport is bad. You should go to Minneapolis, St. Paul. I change. You got the longest walk. You could walk. It's, it's almost like walk. Dallas. You get off the plane at DFW. You get off at Gate A3. You got to go to Gate B2. You will be too late. I can tell you that. Yeah, right but now. at least they have the iPads and they have places yeah. to sit and they have chargers and all the amenities. We got yeah. nothing. Nothing. It's no. the worst. <laughs> well, it was good when TWA was here years ago. Yeah, You're not yeah, old yeah. enough to remember TWA. Uh, yes, I am. They left in what eighty eight or whatever style. it was. Same style. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Uh, well, They're maybe one day I just tear it down. You, your parking is pretty good. You pull pull in and you just pull right up there. Yeah, yeah, you know it's not like going to uh, you know Laguardia or JFK in New York City. Where you got to live. You got to leave four hours before your flight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You go to some of these some of these small towns have great airports. You can walk in, walk right out. It takes twenty minutes from wherever you are here yeah. to get to the airport. Exactly. Nice. So that's good. Yeah, so stop it. That has nothing right? to do with the stop airport it. experience. Why don't you they move, don't, Moon? They don't I want love you, this town. You know what? They don't want you comfortable. <laughs> they want you out. That's why they don't put any amenities in the in the airport here. Wow, all I'm they want you is, out of here. Here's my argument. They don't want you hanging around. Here's my Get argument. out. Go ahead, Moon. You you rem I mean, when 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 you when you Your travel. Your time's up, Moon. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> when you travel for the, you sound just like him. When you uh, when you when you travel for a living, these airports becomes kind of synonymous with the cities. And you sort of you, you start associating the airports with the cities. Oh, without you? a doubt. And if you got a bad airport experience, it's like a business card from the city. And it's if so a lot true. of people are passing through our town because it's in the middle of the country and it's, you know, fly through sort of zone, 
then why not put our best for, foot forward and say like, hey, St. Louis is pretty sweet, man. Come on back. No, mm -hmm. we, we give people... Is that all you got to say, Mo? That's all I got to okay. say. <laughs> <laughs> we have this every But you're week. right about it because I love airports. Actually, my first degree was in transportation, and I love airports all over the world. I travel. I encourage you young people that are listening, everybody in this room, do y'all travel? You've got to travel. That's yeah. what makes you a different person. Yeah. You, you, you learn other cultures and other lives. I love traveling. Every day I'm in a different city, and I just love from Shanghai to Singapore to Cape Town, South Africa. I've been everywhere, wow. man. I've been everywhere. Yeah, we're, we're travelers. We were actually talking about traveling, you know, earlier. You know, Moon was in a traveling band, been all over the world. You know, Scott was, you know, a merch guy with bands and been all what over the world. What did you sell merch? Yeah, I sold it actually for one of his bands, yeah. Okay. And then some other groups as well. But what yeah. is your favorite city you've been to? Shanghai, without a doubt. It used really? to be Hong Kong, but that's what his leather jacket. You ever seen a purple cow? No. Shanghai. <laughs> 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 Shanghai. I, I just love traveling. It used to be Barcelona, Spain, because that's where the nude beaches were. Yeah. When I was young, you know. Yeah, but always the nude beaches are not who you want to see nude. Well, this is true, too. Man. I never went nude. I love going to nude beaches, but I never went because I'm a big black guy, and I don't measure up, too. So I don't want people laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at That's not funny. That's not funny. That's why I... Well, stereotypes I, not true. Yeah, I know the pain. I know the pain. <laughs> you know Spain? No, so I, know the pain. Pain. I know the pain. Well, I know, you know the, the same pain. pain. Okay, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. So, so Barcelona was a great city, and it's Barcelona because the king had a myth. A, myth. a lisp. A lisp. A lisp. <laughs> I said a myth. The king, <laughs> the king had a, a lisp. And everything with the S sounds are pronounced with the uh, S with a TH is pronounced with the I feel like, oh, it sounded a little too, you know, I don't know. Did you ever travel, Riz? Uh, the far, I've been to Israel. I went to Israel a couple years ago. Oh, that's ago. cool. Did you Loved enjoy it? it. I Loved need, it. They tell me you could have some fun in Israel. Loved it. So I have to go. Yeah. And I'm went, supposed to go do a comedy show pretty soon. Went, uh, was there for like two and a half weeks. Went mm -hmm. from the north all the way down to the south. Well, uh, my friend Seinfeld, he's trying to get me to go over there, and uh, they've been trying. I've been working so hard. They tell me the nightlife is, like, really nice. I Tel Aviv nightlife. is a great city. Really? I, that's where I want to go. We spent uh, a yeah. week in Jerusalem. Mm. It was, did you get saved? Do you get to, in a, do you feel religious? Do you feel anything? anything? Um, no, we were there for a bar mitzvah. So we were there for my brother-in-law. His kids got bar mitzvahed at the Western Wall. Ah, oh, so you, you got to uh, participate in that. I was activity. raised Catholic, so I was like, so hey. You went to a Jewish Let me tell you something. My best friend had a boy, and they did the brisk. And I, I'm i such a good oh, the friend. the brisk. <laughs> Why are you calling it? You called it a brisk. Yeah, that's a tea. That's, that's, that's a iced tea. That's, that's a tea. <laughs> so how do you pronounce it with a T? Brisk? No, brisk. I think it's just brisk. 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 Okay. B -R -I -S. And so Jerry Seinfeld he held one leg, and I held the other leg. What? And uh, Yeah. It's supposed to be the granddad, but, uh, you know, we've been best friends for 48 years. And so the Moyle, what you call the guy? The Moyle, yeah. Yeah, he went in and he did the, his little thing and, and zip. And to, to this day, when I walk into the Seinfeld house, the little boy looks at me like, <laughs> I know you from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have you associated with something not good in my head. I don't know when. I'm going to figure it out. So that's a, that was the scene. I did one Seinfeld episode, and that was a witchy woman in uh, Desperado or something like that. And I was looking up like that. He needed that look. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really good to travel. It's, you you didn't want to vomit when uh, when no, they say a lot of people faint. You know, so yeah, I said, yeah. this yeah. Is what told me I would have fainted. I just you know? wouldn't watch. I just wouldn't watch. I just like, all right, man. I'm now this is true, and, and look this up. Okay, so there was an epidemic, and in the in the Orthodox Jewish communities, uh -huh. uh, and this was going on in New York City. Um, kids were getting herpes because the moils would do it with their mouth. I swear yeah. to God. I've what? heard about that. Riz. I've heard a lot of Riz. Moon. Moon. <laughs> Moon's gonna Moon's Wait, you gonna, got, you're gonna, gonna make gonna me research this on my computer? Look yes, up on your computer. What difference doesn't matter? Look it up before Look we leave. up Briss Herpes. And I, I That's swear what it to is, you, not a K. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, it was a thing where. Oh no! Dang! Baby yeah. passes away of herpes in ritual circumcision by Orthodox Jews. This is 2012. Uh, New York City investigation of a death last September. The baby who contracted herpes after a ritual circumcision with oral suction is in quotes. Wow. Yeah. And the at parents a let that. Mitzitza Beppe. I, I don't know how Whatever to say this. the name I don't know how to yeah. say these words. This um, is awesome. Yeah, the, the, the moil removes the skin from the, well, you know. From the pee-pee? Yeah, from the pee, pee With the mouth and sucks the blood yeah. from the oh incision my God, no. to cleanse the wound? What are we doing? 
In 2012? In that's 2012. Only, that's eight years ago, right? Eight, no. That was eight, that's 12, 12 years, years ago. ago. <laughs> 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 Doctor. Now you know, now you know Dr. Dr. Wallace. <laughs> now you know I'm with the DeVry. I couldn't get into Phoenix. <laughs> a 5,000-year-old religious practice. 5,000-year-old religious practicing primarily in the ultra-Orthodox and some Orthodox communities has caused an alarm among city health officials in 2003 and for three babies, including a set of twins, were infected with type 1 herpes. Ugh. Whoa. And I one passed you, away. So at the Gosh. Seinfeld Briss, none of that. None of that. None of those none, shenanigans. None, none, nothing like that. <laughs> I just watched the show. <laughs> Gay ball. <laughs> <laughs> and we, so they nip the tip and then we have bagels and locks after and it's fine, right? Yeah, exactly. Everything. That's what they did, yeah. <laughs> so I've had a, a experience, a lot of experience with the, with the Jewish community and the... Uh, like uh, the Passover's coming up, right? Monday. The dinner and all that. Well, I, yeah, I married into a Jewish family. Okay, so yeah, so. Uh, so I consider myself, you know, as an Italian Catholic. So you're Italian. Oh my God, you're Italian? Mm hmm. You don't got to have all of the food. And, uh, and they were talking to a friend of mine who talks more, the Italians or the blacks? Uh, he was at an Italian dinner. He said, no we way. We don't talk a lot. He, he said, you guys talk a lot. There's eight people, but it sounds like we're at a church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talk on our hands, though. But how much food do you have at that uh, antipasto when you have those big Italian dinners? Oh, there's a lot of That's food. That's crazy yeah. food, man. Because I lived in New York City, so I went to every type of religious dinner, and it's just crazy food at Italian. Uh, well, Italian is probably second to soul food for me. Yeah, yeah. Italian food is really I've really been to good. Sylvia's. You, you haven't been to Sylvia? Yes, I have. Well, fan me with a brick. You got it, don't you? I know. And you've been to Sweetie Pies here? I've, uh, when it was here? I haven't been to Sweetie Pies here. It's gone, yeah. I think. Didn't the, the think, nephew yeah. murder uh, somebody? Yeah, for the insurance money. Yeah, for the mm. insurance money. That was crazy, right? So I tell you, there's some crazy well, the stuff going on. Was it the Bad nephew murdered review. the grandson? Was that the, it was, was a that nephew, the story? It was a nephew, yeah. That's crazy stuff. But Sylvia's up in Harlem. Been there? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm gotta, a food guy. You're a food guy? Love. The new place is a Jamaican-American restaurant right at uh, Lincoln Center. It's called T T Tatiana. Tatiana. Make sure you go there. All right. That's the top new place. Have, have you heard of, uh, in New York City, um, Cuban-Chinese food? So the, yes, I've heard of that. I think that's on my street, on 72nd Street. It's a place called La Caridad. Okay. So it's half Cuban and half... half Half Chinese food. Yeah. That's cool, huh? Do it. You like food, huh? I love food. I do, too. I just love great food. Uh, I love food. I think Chinese is my favorite food. Even P.F. Chang's. You go to P.F. Chang's? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. all right. Sound like right. that. I, I go there for that chocolate wall cake. What do you call that big? Oh, no, the, uh, the Great Wall the of... Great uh, wall. <laughs> you do like food, don't you? like steaks? <laughs> What's your favorite steaks. steakhouse in America? Uh, my house. You, you're not the a real house. Steak? Oh, dude. He's one of those guys. Guess what I had for the first ketchup, time? Ketchup, get your ketchup ready. You want to come over? You're not going to believe, you, <laughs> you're not gonna believe I'm gonna make George, first I'm going to make Dr. George Wallace. This year, <laughs> I was down in, uh, what is it, uh, Panama Canal. This year, I was in Panama. First time, I'm old and I have never had chimichurro, what do you call it? Uh, chimichurri? On, on, on the steak. Yeah, that's like, uh, like, uh, um, don't, don't do it. Parsley. It's really, and... really good. Did really. you do it down in Old Town? In That's Old Town, like, Panama? Like an oil. I don't know where I was. No, I was at my hotel. I was at the hotel on the water. Where so it's like parsley and oil. And, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's really good, though. You don't like that. You just like no, it. I, no, I do. I, I do okay. like it. Yeah, you do but like it. Here's what I do. Right. We buy, we buy my, at my house, we buy half a cow every year. So we buy a half a cow, all cut up from a butcher. Listen, he's my... I knew about that. My dad was a butcher. We have two I deep freezers Yeah, he's got two deep freezers. You got a deep freezer? No, he's got two. He's two deep freezer rich. That's kind of rich You guys don't know what a deep freezer is. They don't know what a deep freezer is. We don't make that kind of money. I don't have that money, yeah. Yeah, we don't have that kind of money. I don't even have a garage freezer. George Wallace, I have two deep freezers. I don't see my name on the wall. Where'd you get your deep freezers from? Do they make deep freezers anymore? Is it special? Of course they do. That's cool. Did you grow up with a deep freezer? No. Oh man, I did. I grew up with a deep freezer with everything in there from the whole for the whole year. As I said, my dad was a butcher, so I'm a different type kid. I grew up eating steak almost every morning. We used to go, Ma, please, 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 too much steak. We had no idea how good we had it as kids. Right. You know? And but uh, yeah, but uh, half a cow. I so see my, my dad butcher the whole cow, man. So my wife and I going with another family. They take one half, we take the other. I tell the butcher exactly what kind of cuts I want. Yeah. You know, inch and a half steaks. I'll take, you know, this many T-bones. I'll take this many, uh, you know, chuck steaks. I'll take the this tail. many, you know, this many. Chuck steak. Yeah, I haven't had a chuck steak since I was in college. I'll even take like um, cube steak. I'll be like, hey. You remember me, cube steak? Give me a challenge. Oh my Let me goodness. see how I can cook this. Really? Oh, yeah. A cube steak. They have no idea what you're talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what cube steak it's, is. What it's is probably that? the cheapest cut of yeah, the... And you have to just beat it to make it... To, to you have to tenderize it. it. Yeah. 
See, wow. we know something. Yeah. Scott looking at us like he's, you know, he's 23 years old. He's going, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, you get, they run it through a tenderizer, and you, they're really only chicken fried steak is the only, basically the only That's thing. That's basically you can, it, right? The only thing oh, you make out of it. Do you like it. a chicken fried steak? I do. I made it for the for the wife and kids really? last week. Do you go to Cracker Barrel? I haven't been there in a while. Ooh. I love it. I do love I'm from Atlanta. They're playing hip hop music at the Cracker Barrel in Atlanta. That's cool. Listen, if you love knickknacks, yeah. you go to Cracker Barrel. Knickknacks. Yeah, do you go to oh, the, the gift shop store? when you're at Cracker Barrel? No, I, I used to get some the of the shop. old candy. I used to get some of that old oh, candy. Oh, the old there. candy candy buttons? <laughs> yeah, I like to do stuff like, <laughs> like that. Like, I want to sit in a rocking I want a wicker rocking chair. Yeah. And I don't you want like to sit out front on the rocking chair? Of course yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever buys them, though. They only just rock well, they're there. They're too expensive. I know. Are they too expensive? They're like, they're like 600 bucks. They oh, gave my family six rocking chairs for my family reunion. Oh, really? No way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That's four deep freezes, or I think. I don't know. It is, but let me tell you something. It's so nice when I go to Cracker. I tell you what, there's nothing like it, you know? Hash brown yeah. casserole. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. the jam. No, there. I get the same thing. That's the problem. Ooh, the best hotcakes in the world. Next time you go to yes. Cracker Barrel, get your hotcakes and grill them as crispy. You can throw them as, as a frisbee. Uh. <laughs> no, the crispy crunch, and then you put the real syrup on them. You Man. can do that? You can say deep fry your, pa your Not pancakes? Fry, don't deep fry them, but you, you know what I'm talking about. What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> you know, but you make them crispy and they're hard, and it's a whole totally different taste, uh. texture. Make sure you do it. But the syrup, oh my goodness. All right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Let's go That's right delicious. now. Let's go. Fine. What's in there? Cracker think, Barrel. I'm it's fine in, with that. It's in St. Louis. It's across yeah, the river. St. Charles. Up, uh, oh, yeah. I'm in St. Charles. I did it once yeah. before. We had to find one way to go across the river somewhere. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, not, it's not far from here. There's one oh, one man. exit down from where you live. I'm so hungry right now, George. Okay. All Me this too. Talk. All this Italian all this food. Yeah, yeah, did food. you eat breakfast yet? I did not. This is all I have is a bottle of water. And now I go, go, I'm going to go home and go to bed. Now we're I'm talking about half together. cows. We're talking about... Uh, Steakhouses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you shut an Italian up? You tie his hands behind his back. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're Italian. Maybe I'm Italian. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're Italian. I'm whatever I need to be that day. That's okay? right. <laughs> no, yeah, you moved to New York City, right? You're from Atlanta? I originally? live in New York. I live in Los Angeles. I live in Las Vegas, and I live in Los Angeles. But you're originally from Atlanta. Atlanta. And you moved to New York City to do the comedy thing. Yes, I moved up there to, uh, I first went up and sold the rags, like I said, and I sold, uh, after I sold rags. Did I tell you guys that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I did, I did that, and uh, then I did advertising. I was vice president of the world's largest outdoor advertising agency. Everything in Times Square, the big billboard. Spectaculous. I saw that um, nationwide, and then I wanted to be a comedian since six years old. I was getting a financial cushion. Yeah. And so then I got to made a, um, I saved up like four hundred dollars, and I moved to L.A. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but New York City. So when did you live in New York City? In the seventies. New York City in the seventies. Yeah, like Way seventy-two, seventy-three. So I moved in New York City during the, during the disco era. That's why I went uh, to one of those bars. Did you go to know. Studio Fifty Four? Hell yeah, I went to Studio Fifty Four. Yes. I went there four times because they wouldn't let me in. I said, "The hell with you all there." Uh, yeah. <laughs> they so you had to you... wait in line. No, you had to wait. And one night they let you, and the next night they wouldn't. I said, I'm not going to sit down in the cold to pay somebody money that don't want to let me in. You know, I thought I was in the first time. And I said, I was here last night, dude. I was talking to you. Yeah, everybody was here last night. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Everybody was here last night. Yeah, so, did but, you love to dance? Go ahead, Mick Jagger. You're in. Did like, you love dancing? I loved dancing because that's what what it was about yes. uh, at the time. It's like Studio 54 was primarily a gay bar, but the New Yorkers say, not today. This is good music. We're coming in. Mm -hmm. That's why you saw everybody from Mick Jagger to Donna Ross to name an entertainer didn't go to Studio 54. Right. Everybody, everybody went. went. Everybody mm -hmm. went. Even little Drew Barrymore went. She was exactly. like, she's she a kid, right? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. You outside. Drew Barrymore this Yes. Yeah. This little yeah. one can come in. Yeah. Well, he can get in that That's day. cool. And then Moon can't even get in. He looks like he's 15 right now. Uh, that's, that's right. Thank you very much. But Thank I'm you. trying to, you know, I grew up in New York. Um, did you? I, Where did you live? I lived in Flushing, Queens. Uh, I lived in the Woodside, dude. Oh yeah, you live. You know, Queens is the best borough. You know, of the whole out of all the boroughs. It reminds me a lot of like South St. Louis. Um, really, I think so. You lived in Flushing. You lived at the stadium. I lived like a couple blocks away, but I grew up a Yankee fan. So, oh, see, we were friends until, until we weren't. Oh, no. Until we weren't. Until he said. That. Wait, you're a Mets fan? Braves, Mets, Braves, no. and oh, Braves. Braves. I'm, I'm Braves. When you think of St. Louis, you do think baseball, don't you? Oh, the yeah. St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. but of course, you guys got a great, you had a great run. Did you win last year? No. 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 I it was so bad last year, people going to the stadium ordering hot dogs to go. It was, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> but I love baseball. I'm talking. Matter of fact, I'm talking about it in my act now. They want to shorten the game. And so three years ago, I did have the idea when the guys, why waste time throwing four balls down? Just a pitcher to, uh, makes a signal, just turn the head and say, dude. 
Go ahead over there. So that shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we should sing the whole anthem. Just say, yeah, the intentional, say yeah, the intentional walk. Just say, go over there. Just, You're just, right. Just go yeah, get yeah. right. Why, just, waste, why time? waste some time? Just, Here's another good point. one. Riz, you got to agree with me. When a guy hits a home run, why the hell should he have to run around all those bases right. to get back to where he just come from? I agree. He I can agree. high five the guys when they come across the base. Yep. That's it. Yep. See, see, just stand there. Speed what did they say right there? I'd be thinking. I'd be thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we had uh, we had Ozzy Smith in here. Ozzy Smith is a good friend of mine. He was here oh, what two weeks ago? Yeah. Really? Um, and I kind of surprised everybody with him coming in, and not not being from St. Louis, um, the look on the people who they went who, crazy. Oh, oh I mean, yeah. That dude moving, was like my first yeah. hero. Started yeah. crying. Are you serious? Oh, dude. Lurk started, started crying. crying. Yeah, because he's like our childhood. You That's know? how yeah. I felt when I met Muhammad Ali. Hero. Oh, you had to meet Mom. Oh. I, I met crying. a lot of people, dude. I've been, I'm so blessed. I met, I you name it. I've been to the White House. Uh, and Obama came to my show in Las Vegas. Wow. I've been really, really. I was at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. Oh, my I've been a, I said, what's the guy, the biggest, there was a sports station in St. Louis. I met him. He played here. He's from Georgia. Old white guy. Uh, Stan Musial? Uh, yeah. You do Stan the Man? I met him at a radio station right here. And said, I've been so blessed. Yeah. Wow. Dang. I know a lot of, and I'm in this, the seven Super Bowl rings in my family, by the way. Oh, yeah, you're dear. My, my brother nephew. Steve Wallace played for uh, our nephew. We grew up in the same bed. For the Chiefs, so right? Huh? Played Steve Wallace the... played for the 49ers for 13 years. Yeah, well, yeah. And my won... nephew is a money tumor, played for the New York Giants. And my yeah. other nephew is uh, Bob Hamilton, played for the New England Patriots and a few other clubs. So, wow. so, so my mama played football. So we, we, uh, <laughs> so I'm in so blessed. My brother, oldest brother, George Wallace Jr., he actually, he's actually one of the first black professional golfers. Whoa. Yeah. When I was a kid, so Lee what happened Elder, to you? No sports? Aw, <laughs> <Aww>, George. <laughs> Dude, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest BSer in town. Yeah, I look at this. I love what I do. I yeah, love BSing was a sport. When, when I see happy people, it makes me happy. I, I do what you do every morning. Look at great, you know. Yeah, Just, BSing was a sport. You yes, know, you'd yeah, be a I'll, hall be, of I'll be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and I will be. Okay. Talk about meeting Muhammad Ali. Yep, meeting him, I was writing the Red Fox. Red Fox is from where? St. Louis, Missouri. Right, and you wrote for his show. I wrote for his show. And then um, he, when we did the variety hour, uh, Muhammad Ali walked in the room. And back in the day, I was about the same size as he was. And, and my, I had the afro like he did. And we looked kind of like, you know. Did it take your breath away? Yeah. When he came in, it was just, he started, he came to me. Uh, I'll knock you out, dude. And I said, I'm the greatest of all time. I kind of, I, mean, I used to do the voice a little bit, you know, uh -huh. just, you know. But it was just great to, and Muhammad Ali, you could approach him. He would be on Sunset walking by himself. I like that uh, personality. That's how good yeah. he was. Nobody's going to bother him. He's Didn't have an entourage? No, he's by him. I used to love that. Wow. He's great. He would walk in, walk you know, someplace Sometimes you want to get away from Yeah. So that's the thing about being, uh, I'm at a position Right now, where I've been working for 47 years, and I love it. And you know, my best friend Seinfeld, uh, Anderson Cooper, we were talking the other day about is, is it better to be rich and or famous? And I thought, I said, you know what, I got it better than both of you guys. Mm. I can do anything you guys can do. I can go anywhere. Enough people know me to satisfy my little ego, bus yeah. driver, blah, 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 but I can go pee. Yeah. <laughs> they can't and go and pee nobody worry about taking pictures of your. Uh... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When they walk out of the house, they don't even know it. Yeah, but the, but the the cameras on him. I was walking through the airport yesterday. Matter of fact, I, I might be on. You're on uh, TMZ. Yeah, TMZ. Yeah, yeah. today or today, last some, night. Yeah, you got some you got some juice on D, on TMZ. Yeah, so you know you never know who's and that's just me. Just imagine them. Yeah, and if they they could go to a hideout, it doesn't matter. The manager of the restaurant, the, the uh, what do you call it, the valet, they call the paparazzi. Mm. Such and such. And yeah, such. is that how that's that, how that happens? happens? Yeah. Like, hey, Seinfeld just pulled up. Tiffany ha T Tiffany Haddish just drove off drunk. Yeah. Oh. Call the police so they can be. Otherwise, how do you think they could meet her in the middle of the street? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. She's doing yeah. well, though. That's good. Well, she's coming back. She's doing well, yeah. Yeah, we, I, we just read about her, right? Yep. That she's doing well. Yeah, you know, and, and Jerry's one of the few people that talks about how he loves being famous and how he's, he, he said multiple times, I think they were, somebody was giving him crap on the. He's an idiot. Comedians <laughs> in cars getting coffee. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, being famous is the greatest. He's like, well, everybody treats me great. Yeah, but he's an introvert at the same time. Is he? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. wondering how much of that was for the cameras. Yeah, when I'm he, teaching him how to like people more and smile more and be nice to people. He's, <laughs> a, he's the nicest guy in the world. He's my best friend. So for 48 years, and just think, if you're going to have a friend, you might as well have the richest one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I took it better. Smart, you yes. have it, Moon. He got a jet. Hell, I got a jet. Oh, uh, dude, him in the season <laughs> finale of, or series finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I don't know if you, did you just watch it? I didn't it see yet? it yet. He keeps telling me you got to see it. Yeah. It was good? I haven't watched it yet either. The perfect ending. You know what? He's he's pretty smart. He goes in, and no matter what they write for him, he changes it around to what he wants to say. It makes it <laughs> Jerry? Yeah. It was the perfect ending, and it it addressed 
and not giving up. Not yeah, giving don't much give away. too much away. It addressed, yeah. the, it addressed Seinfeld the Seinfeld ending? finale. Mm. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Okay. I'll have to check that out. It was. Because I was at the, the Seinfeld ending. finale. I was there. And um, I want to see this curtain. It was it was great. I recommend highly recommend it. Highly recommend. But with with Muhammad Ali, uh, and it's very rare that somebody would walk into a room and suck out all like the energy. Not, not suck out the energy, but like you know, this person walked into a room. Mm -hmm. The world's most famous person ever. Right. And he comes in the room, and he's the best comedian ever. By the way. Really? Muhammad Ali will make you laugh. And, and knowledgeable, a young black man like that having no college out of Louisville, Kentucky, to be able to address anywhere, anybody from right. the president down, just totally, and funny as hell. He is funny as he was. Oh, him and Howard Cosell, those back and forths were uh, That's just the most truckling, man. Yeah, truckling, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to you, you, you go down to YouTube Vortex, just look up. Uh, Muhammad Ali and Howard Cosell, and the the rapport they had. The and I think, they really loved, I think they really loved each of other. Of course they did. Of course they did. They loved each other. That's, they knew they were making fans and money and, and making a name for it, both of them. But they just busting each, each other. other's balls was... Don't you like busting each other's I love balls? It. I do too. I love. I'm a Jonah. Uh, people, you can talk about me. I just love it. And, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be talking about a friend of mine's uh, mama. Doing the J. Anthony Brown, we did the Tom Jones Morning Show together. We're trying to fit our ass through the uh, arc. <laughs> <laughs> Is it proper to say arc or arc? It's an arch. arch. It's an arch. Okay. Okay. So it's, really... it's an arch. Uh, are you a boxing need... fan? Yes. Not now, because I don't know the boxers. Yeah, but what you know I'm... Mike Tyson. He lives in Las Vegas. Yes, I know Mike Tyson. I was, there when he, I was at the fight when he bit up Holyfield's oh, ear. Yeah. Oh, wow. man. Yeah. And I'm from Atlanta, so you know I follow Holyfield. So I know all of the old boxers. Sugar Ray Leonard, we always hang out together when he was a boxer in Las Vegas. I've done... I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, you know, he's fighting that that kid. Well, it's supposed to. Uh, um, you talk about Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's this supposed to be fighting somebody, but the kid got hurt, right? So it's supposed no. to. No, did he? Check really? It out. Say, Logan, what are you talking right? about? Logan Paul. Logan. Logan Paul is a guy from. Uh, he's he's really. He doesn't he doesn't wrestle also does he? Uh, that's the brother Jake. Is that what it is? The okay. brother wrestles. Yeah. The other, he, one, the other boxes. one boxes. Okay. Okay. And they started off as like YouTube stars. Logan Paul expecting his first child. Okay, so he's, he didn't get hurt. No, no. Because no. I'm having a party at my house. I read that. <laughs> I ordered a hot dog cart. Are you <laughs> eat your hummus? <laughs> hummus and hot dogs? <laughs> That's it. It's his party. He I don't makes know. special hummus. <laughs> no, I. I, I I'm gonna, you, is something wrong with you? Yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, you know what? <laughs> what is hummus? I, they try to get me to eat it. It's like it's chickpeas. chickpeas. Yeah. And garlic and sometimes. Tahini. Some I've never peppers. had it. Oh, oh, I never had it. I had it the other night at that Jamaican restaurant I'm staying at, Tatiana's in, in, in New York City. You gotta hide. And I, I would not try it. But you they had, try it. Had, You're afraid of hummus? I don't know what it is. It's like it's white beans. It's, it is white beans. Yeah, I'm not going to eat it. Why? Kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't have like olive oil in it. Guacamole, I don't eat that either. Guacamole look like baby stuff. Like baby duty? Baby duty. Thank you so much, Riz. Baby duty. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. It's good? It is. It's no, good, I've man. seen them. When I got to California, I saw them making it, and I go, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they had a, they were making it at a, at a comedy club, so yeah. it was making it in the tub. I'm going, look at that stuff. Tableside oh, guac is the best. Uh -uh, I won't taste it. No, no. <laughs> I tell you what, I will taste it if you put some cinnamon on it. You love cinnamon. Listen, that won't taste very good, I'm going to talk about, listen, I was with Patty LaBelle last week. We were talking about her sweet potato pies. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about. Doesn't she sell them now? Oh, are you kidding? You can't get them. That's it. I don't know what she's putting in the pie. And, I, and I, I was talking about the ingredients, and you put cinnamon on anything. And, and it went through my head. I'm going to do this joke just tomorrow night. It's about if you put cinnamon on anything, because a lot of old people don't like having oral sex. But let me tell you what you do. Okay. Put a little cinnamon on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkle it. You, have you ever walked to the airport and smelled cinnamon? Yeah, of course. Which is a better uh, fragrance? What do you call it? Not yeah. fragrance, odor. Uh, bacon or cinnamon? Oh, cinnamon. Uh, cinnamon. In the morning cinnamon. bacon. Yeah, but cinnamon belongs more cinnamon, places. Yeah, yeah, but cinnamon. Because you want that your whole house to smell like that. Mm. Yeah, but they put no like, cinnamon sugar. Mom, you say bacon? I like bacon. Bacon's good. Uh, are you Jewish? Bacon will lift me. Are you? I'm you told me you told me to honor I'm an honor. Yeah. 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 Bacon yeah. is just good. You gotta you gotta tell the truth. Bacon will bacon. the the will lift me out of bed and float me down to the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> Bacon is good, huh? Yeah, bacon is great. Even in a dog food commercial, it's not and bacon, 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 bacon. Yeah, it's not I'm bacon. Still, it's not bacon. Hungry. They said bacon, but it's, they sound like bacon. bacon? My like... stomach still growls. Really? <laughs> we need to go get some bacon right Let's now. Let's go. You ever go to a place that have good thick bacon? Have you ever been to a steakhouse and they got the real thick slices? Yeah. Oh. 
Oh. These are broke kids. They have no idea yeah. what we're talking about. I got two camp freezers, George Wallace. <laughs> I'm now, Scott, who's I'm, the comedian? Which one is the comedian? Uh, he's comedian? not here today. Yeah. Well, well, we're we're all all done down in Austin. Austin. We're all comedians. We're all comedians. We do four I hours see. of comedy every day. I see, and that's the point. <laughs> uh, listen, George Wallace... You were with uh, Marsha Warfield. Oh, we didn't even talk about her. We didn't her, even did talk we? about her. Uh, ah. Marsha Warfield, who you know is Roz from Night Court. <laughs> on the new Night Court also. She's back on the Which new Night Court. Which is great, that show. Fantastic. Which I and really so do So she's like. going to be here tomorrow night and Saturday night. You need to, you got two headliners on one show. Perfect. Two headliners. And uh, I cut the price down here. You can see me for uh, almost nothing, and it's $150 to see me in Las Vegas. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and then I come here, and, and I go over to the hamburger place. Oh, I went to this hamburger. What's it called? I was going to go into Five Guys. Oh, yeah. Five Guys, and that, yeah. That's too many people touching my meat. I said, I, got to, I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> but that's the place where the people complain about the price of food. Oh, now, yeah. Right? Yeah. You get a hamburger for $20 now? What the hell is going on? It's six. Yeah. You, want, you want a hamburger, fries, and a drink? It'll cost you 25 bucks. That's not right. You Are you old enough to remember? I, you guys are not going to believe this. I went to McDonald's when I was a kid. I had the hamburger, the fries, and the soda. For seventy nine cents. Yeah. Mm. Wow. What? Lauren, you're not gonna change. believe that. Huh? I don't believe that. How old do you think she is? How old do you think I am, George? Twenty three. Good. Thirty nine. Are you really? I am. I just turned thirty. Well, that was my first guess, but I didn't. <laughs> 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 hey, see, you know, you tw <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking to a lady, always go low. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Twenty three. You've been around. You know. All right. See, George Wallace, Marshall Warfield, uh, tomorrow and Saturday, Helium Comedy Club, seven and nine thirty. Yes. Uh, what else you got? You doing? guys got to come out, too. Just don't jive me. You're welcome to come free and bring your family, bring your friends. Thank you. How about that? But, of course, how about that? I love you. Yeah. All right? You're the sweetest. I love you, too, you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about Next it. Next time you come to town, we're going to go get a steak. Actually, I want you over my house. I'm going to cook you steak. You got a deal. You got seasoning? We don't oh, okay. my oh, gosh. Now you're telling me bad words. Does he have seasoning? Oh, wait a second. Can He's I ask you about only salt and pepper? You don't know. That's it. He I don't put anything on my. He won't even allow you to put a special guest. Have you ever heard that new seasoning called bull chicken? No. no. Chicken crap, bull crap. Okay. Look it up. Moon. Look it up. Moon. <laughs> Look, Look it up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called good s b s. Yeah. yeah, bull s. Bull s. Yeah, chicken s. And it's good. Uh, no, I've never season? heard of this. This is George. I only put salt, salt and, pepper and pepper on my. Steaks. Well, how do you get seasoning? That is the seasoning. It must be really good. It's the medium rare, perfect every time. I medium love well, dude. Seasoning, medium rare. Medium well. You're a medium oh. well. Yes. I'm not invited. You're disinvited. I can't come. <laughs> you have been uninvited, but you can come to my place. <laughs> I am uninvited myself. <laughs> you're out. You're, you're out. You like the blood coming out? Oh of the thing? yeah, come on, man. I used to do that. I used to do that. Yeah, medium rare. It's, it, that's medium the max. Medium rare. Look up that thing I told you about bullets. It's right there. Oh, you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah. There come it on. Is. Oh wow. Oh, that's the stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna send you some. All right, that's the stuff. I'm going to send you something. All right, you're back in. You're back, you're back in the house. No, in no. The house. He's at my He's place with hummus and guacamole. Hey. The what? <laughs> the, oh, dude, that would be the worst thing. <laughs> house. No, I'm cooking this. Steak, hummus, and guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking this Tatiana stuff. Hey, man. there he is, the great George Wallace. You got Wallace. Tatiana out there? Yeah, look at that. Uh, okay. Ooh. That's good. You should have told me. That's the other night. That's the braised beef. I was uh, just there last weekend. I wish you would have told me about this. Well, I didn't know your ass then. <laughs> I just you know, where where were you? you, doctor? This is at the at the uh, the center. What do you call it? The Le Metropolitan Opera House. Lincoln, oh, yeah, Lincoln Center. The Lincoln Center. That's where it is. Lincoln Center, right there. Tatiana. So you Tatiana's. guys learned a lot from me today, and I learned a lot from you. I learned not to go to Riz's house for steak. Yeah, that's blood. right. The blood that is. He that takes is. it out of the freezer, let it thaw out, and, that's and then it, he Tanya. eats it. That's yeah. cooking. Yeah. That's cooking at the Riz House. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, George Wallace. Thank you, sir. Love you. Thank you so much. All right, it's 9.15. It is uh, Thursday. Traffic and Weather Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. Right lane block due to a crash, 70 westbound at 170. Your point forecast, some severe storms likely high of 82 right now at 63 at the Point Studio. So uh, join Moon Saturday with his buddy Rocchio for a live podcast taping of the Soccer 101 podcast. It's a watch party. 
It is a uh, live podcast taping. That's right. We'll be out there from 5 to 7 with all the point swag and some uh, 101 ESPN swag as well. We're going to do a little pre-game taping, a live taping, right. if you will, of the podcast. Uh, like I said, we'll be down there 5 to 7. We'll probably start the podcast taping around 6. We'll hang out. Some pre-game stuff. Game kicks off at 7. And, and they'll have the game on the on the screen down there. Yes, they, they have multiple screens down there, so we'll all be able to enjoy the great food trucks at Nine Mile Garden. Great food. Great scene, uh, great fans, and we're watching St. Louis City SC take on Sporting KC on in the Derby Q, if you will, or the I seventy Derby, however you wish to. Uh, here, here, to can I recommend it. something? Please uh, recommend. Get down there a little early because, you know, parking is at a premium down there. Mm -hmm. And if the first time I was there, I passed it fifteen times. <laughs> you kind of yeah. need to know where Nine Garden is. Well, we're going to make it easy by having the point van and a one hundred and one hundred one ESPN van out there as well. Yeah, and also, it's pretty right? easy to see. It's where there's this really long garden. <laughs> Stop it. Don't mess. confuse people. Have you been there, Lauren? No, I haven't been there yet. So, so what is that? Gravoy? Is that Gravoy right Gravoy, there? Gravoy, yeah. Okay, so I passed it 15 times. Yeah. I'm like, where the hell is this place? It's on Gravoy. But it's off Gravoy, though. Well, it's 9375 Gravoy. Afton. In Afton. In Afton, yes. <laughs> That'll be fun, though. It's a, it's, a, it's a cool place, and uh, get there early. Yeah, it's a cool event. It's, it's supposed to be in the, in the mid-60s Saturday night, so. Yeah, it's going to be a nice... Uh, Grab a sweatshirt. Nice, cool area. See, see this, Learn? It's like this whole area wow. to hang out, and they yeah. pack it with food trucks, and uh, it's just going to be awesome. My friends all have, like, I have a friend that has a pop-up vintage store, and they're there all the time, like, every Sunday. I just haven't gotten out there. There's one in Cottleville, too. I think it's the same the same people. Oh, is it? I yeah, didn't know that. One in Cottleville. Is it the same people? I don't know. Ah. Okay, here's sports. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Maybe. I don't know. Ah. Uh, all right. Uh, quick sports report. Moon coming at you. Sports presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, dine at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Jordan Bennington. Yes. The key to any Blues success this year was solid again last night. 36 saves. Not enough, though, to win. Uh, the Blues lost to the Stars in a 2-1 to -one shootout loss. The results left the Blues with 92 points, 11-point improvement over last year, even though St. Louis missed the postseason for the second straight season. Uh, the uh, Blues were eliminated on Friday after playing 80 games of meaningful hockey. And then uh, there That's it, it. Bummer. Uh, the, the NHL staying with that announced Wednesday afternoon that the next season's Winter Classic at Wrigley Field between St. Louis and Chicago will be played 4 p.m. Tuesday, December 31st on New Year's Eve. So yeah. at Wrigley... Man, that'd be a cool That'd be a cool thing event. To do. Mm -hmm. First Winter Classic held in December. The rest of them, I think, were all in January. And, I mean, it'd be a cool thing to do if it was in St. Louis and <laughs> not in, I didn't have to go to Chicago. And Wrigley yeah, was yeah, here. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, Wrigley was here. Uh, <laughs> it would be pretty cool. <laughs> the Cardinals have yet to win the final game of any of the six series they played this year. And in those games, they're averaging two and a half runs. The Cards too shy of tying the franchise record for losing the final game of a series to start a season. In 1898, the St. Louis Club opened the year 0-8 in series finales. So we're... Getting close yeah, to that. We're on pace. All right. Uh, they lost to Oakland 6-3 last night, but are back home at Bush tomorrow against the Brewers at 7-15. This year's USA men's Olympic basketball roster has some uh, calling the squad the new dream team, and holy smokes, it is. Check out some of the names that are going to hit Paris this summer. The superstar squad has LeBron James, Steph Curry, Joel Embiid. Uh, the team also features Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Drew Holiday, uh, Bam Adebayo. We got uh, Anthony Davis is on there, and uh, Kawhi uh, Leonard. And Christian, Christian Leitner. That was my joke. You guys are mowing the very few lawns that I have left. <laughs> we talked about John Tay Porter's... Uh -oh. <laughs> we talked Porter about... <laughs> You did that on purpose just to cut me off? No, I had I, no idea. John T. Porter's NBA career is done. We talked about it in the top of the show. If you missed that, make sure you check out the podcast because this guy uh, violated league rules by inside insider betting stuff. And uh, he made all of $21,000, and there goes his potential $10 million career. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Blake Griffin is done playing ball after 14 seasons. The former high flyer is retiring from the NBA. Uh, he said, all of these experiences made my 14 years in the league truly unforgettable. I can't help but to feel... Just thankful. Uh, he played, uh, let's see, he was with the Clippers. Clippers. He was with... Um, the Nets. Yeah, well, he finished He finished in... Uh, was it Detroit? Uh, I think so. Anyways, he's done. I uh, got some more information about Caitlin Clark and everybody just up in arms about uh, the 
you know, ridiculous salary that she's basically not making. Um, I'll put that up on the blog. But I'm Moon, and that's your sports because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, working it. All right, uh, quick break. We'll come back with today's headline who story. It's 931. It is Thursday. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence mu Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more in the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. Right lane block due to a crash 70 westbound at 170. Uh, there's also a right lane uh, emergency blocks because of uh, repairs there, 141 northbound just after Old Woods Mill. Today, your point forecast, some severe storms likely high of 82. Right now it is uh, 61 at the Point Studio. So uh, we ran a little late with the great George Wallace. It was amazing. I could, was... I could have still been talking to him. I yeah. know that was his sweet energy man. is still in this yeah. studio. I'm still buzzing. Yeah, but you know we we do have uh, you know work to do. Mm -hmm. Let's get to today's headline hoosh. and it's sponsored by Moritz Roche Jewelry, the official jeweler of the Rizzuto Show. Guys, yeah. get the hoosh mobile. Let's go to Seminole, Florida. Okay, and here we are. Yay. Lovely shotgun. 49-year-old Anna Louise Keller told cops she didn't realize she was driving around on three tires on Monday. <laughs> uh, arrested after cops uh, got multiple 911 calls reporting that she was driving recklessly with no passenger side front tire. I mean, completely gone. Wow. <laughs> Just riding on the rim. Sparks and everywhere, right? On our sure tires. So cops spotted Anna Louise driving, pulled her over to conduct a welfare check. When they talked to her, yep, smelled the booze. She admitted to a drink and told deputies that she was unaware the tire was gone. Yeah, it seemed a little weird, huh? <laughs> Car was pulling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't drive That's like a realignment, I think. Uh, failed a field sobriety test, unsteady, bloodshot eyes, blood alcohol level of 0 .160, which is, that's right, double mm. the legal limit. Cops found yeah. four empty bush light beers in a bag on the passenger side of the car with a receipt showing the purchase of the same day. Can you really arrest someone that's that good at driving? She didn't wreck that. She didn't wreck, and she, listen, only four bush lights. Just four. Just four. A little bit over. How itty bitty is this double? person? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, look her up. Oh, boy. Uh, Anna Louise arrested <laughs> and charged with DUI. So there you go, from Seminole, Florida, Anna Louise Keller driving around on three tires. Today's headline hooge. <laughs> Donnie Fandango. All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. Uh, first off, I want to thank Mr. George Wallace for coming in. It was a pleasure to have him on. Wonderful man. Uh, see him at Helium Comedy Club with Marsha Warfield tomorrow and Saturday. All right, today's wrap-up sponsored by... Jack in the Box. Jack Raps. A little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence, only at Jack. All right, what is today's podcast title? George Wallace and the Trusted Beehole Products. Okay. <laughs> it's a good band, too, if you've not heard it. Yeah. All right, yeah. Moon, what else? Uh, soccer, one, soccer 101 podcast we dropped uh, either yesterday or this morning. Uh, a lot of talk about Sam Adinaran and, and what's been happening there. That whole drama, he's basically been benched. Um, so check it out. We talked a lot about that. It's a really fun episode. And then speaking of episodes, we're doing a pregame taping of the old uh, Darby Q that's coming up. St. Louis City SC takes on Sporting KC in KC. But we, me and Rocchio and Soccer 101 Podcast, we're doing a watch party. Five to seven is when we will be down at Nine Mile Garden on Saturday on Gravoy and Afton. Come on down. We'll ha have a whole bunch of swag. We'll record a podcast there, and then we'll watch the game. It'll be awesome. All right. Learn. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, Fenton. Come on out. There's a new Petra Mart in Fenton. It's 222 Schneider Drive. I'm going to be there from 3 to 5, giving out Point Fest tickets every 15 minutes. You can get details at 1057thepoint.com. You can also follow me at Learn Versus Radio on the socials. All right, where's your band playing? Uh, we're playing actually not this Saturday, but next Saturday at the Alley in Washington, Mo. Cool. Scott. Yeah, you can follow me at King Scott Rules. And if you guys want this Friday night or Sunday... Out of St. Louis Family Church, I'll be uh, uh, part of the worship team. So it'll be good fun. Cool. So swing on by. Uh, all right. Yes. I have one other announcement. It is official that Spring Fling out at Vice's Bar in Redbud, Illinois, yeah. is happening May 4th. May the 4th. Dirt May bags? the 4th be with you. 
Yep, we uh, the Dirtbags are going to be playing. We have a, a full three-hour set. We're going to do alternative and the country, so the Alabama Dirtbags will be out there as well. Scattergun uh, Jack is going to be playing along with other bands. They always have a great bit of food and booze and fun, and Red Bud knows how to throw a party. Oh, Vice yeah. always Bud brings rules, it. Man. This is the one where they shut down the street. Love we that. do it outside or inside if the weather is so, like, this is a rain or shine thing. Always an incredible party. Uh, that is happening May 4th. It all kicks off. Well, it's an all-day thing, but I think the music starts at 3. So, right. so plan on having your Saturday out at May 4th um, out in Redbud, Illinois. It's going to be all great. All right. We leave you with a selection from our team. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shots, St. Louis home for blues hockey. From Scott City, Missouri, Michael Wally is our team. Yeah, Michael Wally. And Michael wants to hear this song, which I couldn't find. He said anything by Greek Fire. Oh, which, I thought I put that in the system. Which you don't have a song it's called anything. So I just thought, I thought this would be all right. Hmm. Okay. Hope this is